This is Dr. Pepper Friday Night Rivals. Final week of the regular season here on UTV 44 tonight, and we will see the number one ranked and unbeaten and defending 6A state champions, the Saraland Spartans, on the road as they travel to McGill to take on the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets, hoping to end their season on a positive note. Good evening. I'm Jim Cox. As always, my partner, Dan Brennan here. And Dan, this, the Saraland team, we've seen them a couple of times mm. here this year. So impressive. They've won 15 in a row. They've had one perfect season in school history in 2019, looking for another one here tonight. All that, and the first thing it always starts with is their quarterback, K.J. Yeah. Lacey, right? K.J. Lacey, and they do have, they've got great players all over the field, but K.J. Lacey, the Texas commit, he's getting a little crowded over <laughs> in that quarterback room for Texas <laughs> right now. But uh, he's going to be the next one in there. He's just a junior now, at nearly 1,900 yards, 27 touchdowns, just four picks, having an incredible year. Uh, so on the other side, McGill Tulin will do their best to try and uh, stop that, if they can anyway. Shamar Welch is a really terrific cornerback. Not the biggest guy, but good enough. He just got an offer from uh, Troy. Committed there, right? Uh, committed yep. to Troy. So uh, a, a good college player that we'll get a chance to see tonight. McGill, younger, not as skilled as Sarah Land, but we'll see if they can give it a go. Yeah, it's a, it's a big test for McGill Tulin here tonight. And it's uh, one of those games that, uh, again, they've been playing better down the stretch, looking to build some positives under new head coach David Faulkner, wants to try to carry something into the offseason. Sarah Land, they want to keep rolling as they are, uh, again, ranked number one in the state, unbeaten defending state champions. We'll see if they can close out that perfect season tonight here on UTV 44. Just about ready to get Friday Night Rivals underway. Our last game of the 2023 season as we get ready for a kickoff here. Let's go back and look at tonight's coin toss. Uh, looks like McGill has won the toss. And let's see what you would guess. McGill won the toss, and they're going to take the football. And you don't see that all that often anymore, but uh, in this game, you, don't, you just you don't want to fall behind quickly, as no, uh, you, most teams have against Jeff Kelly's teams you know, to start the season. You don't often see a team that I would think averages 35 in the first half. Yep. See what he's done here at Saraland. 78.4% winning percentage, and... I think about Jeff, too. I mean, yeah, they, he's got a super team, right? He's got commits all over the place going here and there to all big schools. But what we haven't even talked about, the kids are going to just like Sunbelt schools yeah. and all that. But he's always had well-coached teams. These teams, no matter the level of talent, this is an extraordinary level uh, this season and last. It's a, it's a well-coached team. For sure. And then you got David Faulkner coming back to this area after being over at Enterprise and working the college game for a while. Was it Fair Hope where we got to know him? And he's here at McGill, and hopefully he'll be here for a while. This is Shamar Welch, who Dan highlighted in the opening of the broadcast. Gets dropped back at the 22-yard line, but hopefully David is, is here. McGill, they go through a lot of coaches. They need some stability here and kind of right the ship and just just kind of get, get a, a culture in, yep. in place and, and get back to doing what McGill... I mean, they won the state championship back in 2015, and they need to keep... They need to get back to those those door, glory days here. Yeah, and, and I think he's the right guy to do it. Murchison, the quarterback, Andrew Murchison, we, we liked him. We saw him last year. We liked him. We saw him earlier this year. Had a big week last week, and he's thrown for 1,300 yards to start the season so far and out across the 25. Out about the 27 is the freshman, Ladarian Miller, who had a big week last week. So, Murchison, he's got 11 touchdowns and four interceptions on the year. Roscoe Haywood, they like him on the edge. They'll also go Wildcat with him. Shine, Collie, Diamond, Patterson, all up front. Pressure coming, and now Murchison has to throw that one into some pressure, but got rid of it. And actually, you know, McGill's offensive line did a pretty good job there to give him a little bit of a pocket against this defense that is just so stingy, only giving up 48 rushing yards per game. Thompson, Coleman, the Alabama commit, and Paramore up front. Bowie, Lafitte, York, and Curtis, uh, Jamison, Curtis, mm. Gully, White, Womble, and Crenshaw in the backfield here on third down. 
fired up to the far side, and Murchison's got that one complete, and he's got Tylen Stanton, a first down for McGill on the opening drive. Ruth Doctor's first down, and good, good first drive here to uh, open things up for McGill. Well, I think the eye opener is the fact that Murchison has time, but yep. that big defensive line has not just collapsed on them and on the quarterback, and so good for McGill. See that up tempo that we talked about a little bit during the Theodore game, and. Murchison out the near side, it gives his tight end, Will Miles, and Miles across midfield and up to about the 48-yard line. Pickup of 17. It really took your time blowing that one dead, Jim, and I'm like, that thing, you got three and four on one, that thing's going to come loose, but he hangs on to it. McGill's got another first down. And Murchison, a good strong start here, and, and you, you just can't line up and run it on Sarah Lane. Nobody's been able to do it all year. They give up 48 yards a game. They've held three teams to negative rushing yards in the game. Yep. So you can see the, the quick outs here and trying to keep it. And now up the right side, breaking free is Miller. Miller across the 10 into the end zone. Touchdown, 48 yards. Mac T and not a flag on the field. That's why they wanted it first, I guess, huh? AMS Calvert, touchdown for McGill. And the Yellow Jackets here on senior night. Open things up with an impressive drive capped off by this 48-yarder by the freshman. Well, there he goes. Man, you just don't see that out of Sarah Land at all. McGill Tulin, kind of a so-so year. First year for Faulkner. But coming out of the gates big time here tonight against Sarah Lane. When was the last time they trailed? Maybe Lipscomb Academy week one? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Probably so. So we talked about nobody's been able to stand up and run it here on Sarah Lane. 48 yards, that's what they give up per game. The freshman Ladarian Miller goes 48 there for the touchdown. And indeed it was <laughs> the touchdown. So impressive start for McGill Tulin here, you know, Jeff Kelly was saying, you know, this he's he was impressed by this McGill team and he said they always play better here at the lip. They play better here they at, play at better, home. Play better at home and uh, had a pretty good out out to uh, had good good outcome against Blunt. All right, we're back after this quick start for McGill here on Friday Night Rivals. Oh always one of the most energetic energetic school bodies at any Friday night game, those here at McGill and it, David Faulkner, I mean, he, he couldn't have scripted it better to start this one, Dan. No, Bennett. and it, it wasn't any sort of trickery there. Nope. They were plays from scrimmage, some quick passes, and then a, right back. off guard, gone. Win the coin toss, take the ball. You know, you think you're going to have some tricks up the sleeve against Sarah Land, and they just played football better than Sarah Land about four plays in a row. A minute 19, that's all it took. Sante McWilliams. Back deep. Short kick to the near side, taking their Jordan Dees. And good field position for Sarah Land as Dees out to about the 43 yard line. And we see this offense for Sarah Land come out here, averaging 52 points a game. Dan talked about that young man that Jeff Kelly's talking to right now, KJ Lacey, the Great quarterback completing 68% of his passes on the year. You know, his, uh, his numbers are almost identical to where they were at this time last year. Big numbers, 27 touchdowns, four interceptions, as Dan said. Just. I mean, those numbers say a lot, yeah. don't they? Closing in on 2,000 yards here in the regular season. Sante McWilliams offered by Stanford, and he's up to about the 40 eight as he'll get nine on first down and 547 yards on the year for McWilliams five plays 76 yards just a buck 19 for our Mobile County Sheriff's Office scoring drive for the Gil Tulin Yellow Jackets and just jumped off sides yep D's up in the slot got moving too soon and Back up the Jackets, uh, back up the Spartans five. This offense, Lacey McWilliams, Bush the blocking back. Williams, of course, the reigning Alabama Mr. Football. 
Dunklin gets the start tonight. Green, Sullivan, Chastain, Sexton, and Martin, the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star there, and Jordan Dees will start at tight end. They'll work Dylan Alford in there as well. At wide receiver Mike Smith will get some time tonight, and they look his way, and I'm not sure Smith was looking for the pass. Not, not, not initially, for sure. Good defense. So now third and seven coming up here is this defense. Justin Kidd, Nobles, Waters, and Gonzalez, Hill, Hawthorne, Miller, and Adams, the linebackers, Whitfield, James Jackson, and Will Jackson, and Shamar Welch, who just committed to Troy last week. And third and seven for the Spartans here on their first possession. Lacey looks to air it out into double cup and it's hauled in and caught by Jordan Dees. Wow. Dees down to the 23-yard line, pickup of 23, and a Roof Doctor's first down. That's trusting your receiver to make a play. No doubt. Well, she's got safety help, and it's not enough. Boy, what a talented player to just go up and get it, right? High point that ball. Dees, one of the rare seniors on this team, his 11th catch on the season. And zip back the near side, Alfred, and Alfred dropped in the open field. Good tackle there by Welch. Good tackle by Welch, and he also le leveraged him back to the field, and Clay Casey wasn't able to bring him down. Overall, good play number two. Yeah, not much of a gain there. Dunklin comes in. And had a whistle there, wasn't sure what... That was four. Looks like they got everything set here. And Lacey with a hard count. He'll pick up a free five here. And might have been Waters jumping up at the top of the screen. I think it was. The coastman. Defense. Five yards. Second down. So second and about six here, and McWilliams breaks the tackle, and he is down. The ball came loose at the end of that play. They wrestle for it. And McGill had more players there. Let's see. Looks like Sarah Land will keep it. Here's the end of the play here. McWilliams. He's kind of lost it there, and he was able to get it back. Mm. Sarah Land maybe a little, a little, little, little wobbly, right? Yeah. We can change that in a hurry right here. Yeah, first and goal from the six. McWilliams makes a move, and he lunges down inside the one. McWilliams with 15 touchdowns on the year. We don't talk about the strength of the Sarah Land offensive line a lot, but they do their job too, right? They're I'm, not all the five stars, but man. We haven't seen Lacey with a dirty jersey in the two games no, we've, we we've, have not. we've done this year. Right back to McMilliams, and he lunges up at the goal line, and I don't know now they'll say he didn't get in. Mm, wow. He was met in midair, but he was able to get in. It was a little bit of a delayed call, but Sante McWilliams has his 16th touchdown on the season, and Sarah Land a point away from tying this one up. Amonis Calvert touchdown. Amonis Calvert innovations in steel, strengthened by people. Now hiring at AmonisCalvertJobs.com. Gill met him in the hole there with Justin Kidd Nobles. On the start, Tucker Singleton on, and we are tied at seven. Just past four minutes gone by. Here in the opening quarter, each team's had it once. Each team's had a touchdown. Sante McWilliams, number 16 on the year for Saraland to tie this one up. Sante McWilliams on the bench over there for Saraland after their touchdown to answer back. But, I mean, we're four minutes in this one. The story was how impressive was McGee on that opening drive on yeah. offense. Four plays, minute 19. Well, guess what? Get to see it again now. So uh, if they can do anything like they did, you know, getting that first first down, we were like, okay. 
and then busting one for the freshman running back. 48 yards. Man. And Singleton do kick here for the Spartans. Hangs this one high, and Welch again will take it at about the 19, passes it back. Now looking to reverse field going the other way, Roscoe Haywood. And I mean, if, you, if you're McGill, like, pull them all out. Like, it, don't take them into the offseason, right? I think that's why we were so impressed with that first drive, right? It was none of that. It was just playing football, and they scored in three or four plays. Here's the razzle-dazzle that we all thought would come out of the uh, toy box as the uh, night goes along. Yeah, and Welch, I mean, he threw that one back. Ten yards. Right. Yeah. He would kind of back up to about where Welch maybe would have had it. Do we have a flag on that? We did like an unsportsmanlike. Mm. That's one, one thing you just can't have. That's wow. a 15-yarder. Oh. So puts McGill all the way back to about the 12-yard line. And when you, when the margin for error is so, so slim when you're going against a team, you're outmanned against. Those are the things that, that just cause yeah. you to lose games. I, I say that because I, of who I watch every Sunday, and I watch the Chicago Bears do that every <laughs> every Sunday. Overmatched, huh? Yeah. Did you do, take a little road trip to go watch him play? You know, back to back road trips. L.A. last week, New Orleans this weekend to watch him play is. Up to about the 20, I mean about the 14 is Antonio Coleman, the Alabama commit. Well, one of those is truly a, <laughs> a road trip. From L.A. to L.A., right? Lower yeah, Alabama to, yeah. to Los Angeles. There's your road trip. So Coleman. I can walk to New Orleans. <laughs> with the stop after a pick of about Five, three. three. Okay. Lenahan in the backfield gets his second carry. Sophomore zips this one. Nice pass there from Murchison to Stanton. And it'll pick up a first down up to the 25. You know, we talked about Murchison, how much we liked him. We saw him last year, liked him in the Theodore game uh, when we he had saw time him as to a throw. Freshman. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. And, you know, the new coach, David Faulkner, coming in here, it's like, how good is he going to be next year? Yeah. A full season in the system, off season in the system. He's going to be great next year. Yeah, you've got the size for colleges to really like what they see. Anahan put on the brakes, and then Cameron York comes in to make the stop for his. 20th tackle for a loss on the season wow. for the Spartans. Yeah, they, they really affect the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four. Second and 14 here for Murchison and the Yellow Jackets. Murchison steps up in the pocket, middle of the field, and that's incomplete. And that one go off the hands of Roscoe Haywood, but, but just be aware. I mean, had some pressure coming, climbed in the pocket, yeah. then stepped up and delivered that one, maybe a little hot and on top. Seven plays, 57 yards for Sarah Land. Two minutes and 40 seconds off the clock before the touchdown by McWilliams. Murchison plays like a veteran. Yep. And you're right, next year he could really have quite a year. 6'4", 200 plus pounds. Third and long here for the Jackets. Murchison in the pocket, middle of the field again, able to get that one off, and he's got a complete. Roscoe Haywood, and he's going to have the first down. Haywood up to the 38-yard line. He'll pick up 17. And another Roof Doctors first down here for the Yellow Jackets. You know, Steve Mask was telling us before the game last week at Theodore, he said, if we can get out of the first quarter, if we can get out of the first quarter down seven, hang around, suddenly you, you can stretch this into a game. Mm -hmm. But so many teams get, just get blown out in the first 12 minutes against Sarah Land. Well, we compared it last week to going in, up against Mike Tyson back yeah. in 1989. Yep. The people that lost that fight before the press conference. Lenahan stacked up there at the line of scrimmage. Might have got one. As again, Antonio Coleman, he is a load to handle. Just a junior, 6'2", 265, going to I, geez, Alabama. I keep forgetting he's a junior, you know. I know that's like part of my job, so I shouldn't admit that. But uh, I, I know who the juniors are, and then I just would consider him like he's on his way, right? Nope. Not yet. Murchison steps up. Now he's hit that one. Tip picked off. Tipped in the air. Cameron Lafitte has it for the pick six. Touchdown, Sarah Land. Put pressure on the quarterback. 
you up your chances of something like this happening, and it did. Second interception, second defensive touchdown for Cameron Lafitte. And the senior makes a memory here tonight at McGill. But Dan's right, the pressure came in, got deflected in the air, and Lafitte just stepped right in front. Let's we'll see who gets a, a hand on it there coming in. That was Jamison Curtis. Oh, yeah, Curtis. Going really? to Memphis at Alabama, Mississippi All-Star. And just like that, we talked about getting out of the first quarter, and now a pick six makes yeah. that a little more challenging. Perfect. By Singleton and Cam Lafitte, the senior leading tackler on this team, adds a pick six to the stats in Sarah Land on top now, 14 7. Good look here at a place they call the Lip. Mm -hmm. Done a lot of games in this building, Dan Brennan. We have, starting way back in the uh, 2008 Late 60s, or so. late 60s. <laughs> well, yeah, we did Nebraska, Oklahoma here one year, <laughs> didn't we? So Sarah Land on top, 14-7. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan here. McGill Tulin hosting Sarah Land. And you said, so it was, it was Jameson Curtis got in there on the on the pressure, but it was Chris Thompson. You said that, that was when you got the hand up, got the tip away there. Yeah, and you know, you, they say, hey, look, they're just high school kids. They're just kids. I saw Chris Thompson before the game without his helmet on. He's a man. I mean, he's like, what's up? Been starting since he was a sophomore for this. Yeah, he, he, he's a dude. And Singleton here to kick, see if they have any more trick plays. And now Sarah Lamb going to be offside on... Boy, that really went haywire, huh? Offside and out of bounds. Yeah, uh, but I guess the out of bounds, because the play's dead yeah, at the offside there. But, but yeah, that, that, that's, that's a miscue. You don't... They're looking for Seager against the kicking team. Five yards, re-kick. So, offside, I'll back it back to the 35. David Faulkner. Yeah. Right guy, right time, right there. Yeah, boy, we, we liked him when he was in, in Fairhope, when he had good success at Enterprise, and I said worked in the college level. Uh, West Virginia, yes. uh, I think he was at Troy for a little bit as well. And he was at West Virginia right before the McGill job. Yep. This is what brought him back. <coughs> Welch takes it at the 23, then just lost his footing and slipped across the 25-yard line. Take another look here at the sack. So it's Curtis who comes in and gets Murchison. Applies the pressure, but it was tipped actually yeah. by Thompson at the line of scrimmage. Just a good practice, right? Yep. Give yourself up, get your hands in the air. Something like that might happen. And McGill now will start back at the 27. And if you're a quarterback, you just got to have a short memory and keep this one up, and that's exactly what Murchison does on the slant, and he's able to pick up the first down to Stanton, and a Roof Doctor's first down, and a pick up a 15. Sorry, Jim, I kind of see what Coach Kelly saw on film now. He was like yeah. saying, they can move the ball, guys. They're pretty good. We didn't see this team against the No, we did not. They took that night off for whatever reason. The freshman Miller, who's got the lone McGill touchdown, gets stopped there by Lafitte, and Miller over 700 yards on the season. Had 204 earlier this year against Baldwin County. I wonder what he's going to grow into be. Right? Freshman running back. Yep. A game like that? Are you kidding? He had two touchdowns and 118 yards against Blunt last yep. week. And David Faulkner was just saying, this, that was our most complete game last week, offense, defense, special team. So we gave up a couple of touchdowns late, but really played well in that game. And now the middle of the line, Thompson... Stopping things there with some help from Lafitte. And he'll bring up third and long here for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, second and eight became third and eight. Good stop by that Sarah Land defense. They've got some really fine players up front. But really all over the defense. They're really good. And just big. Yeah. Big and fast, which is a good combination. Yeah. Not, you know, it's a good combination to have, right? <laughs> third and eight. Murchison flips it out of that one high and off the hands of Stanton. And we'll see if David Faulkner he's gonna punt. He is gonna he is gonna punt here. You know, with Sherlin getting the ball, you you you've got to 
just consider it almost every time, right? Like, right. Do we get a first down here and keep it out of their hands for that's four more I, minutes? That's what I was, I was thinking. And then you also think about, okay, so send the punt team out. Oh, yeah, well, Sarah Lynn's blocked seven punts on the year. Mm, good point. Henry Green. Talked to his dad before the game. A low snap bounces back to Green, but it was a good job to get it off and just takes a really good bounce all the way down to about the 22 yard line. Well, that worked out way better for McGill than it possibly could have. I agree. So you, you flip the field a little bit, you make them work at it. With Sarah Lynn on a short field, is really, it's really not fair. So that's yeah. why you have to you make them, keep them from getting it to explosive play. And, and, and just keeping the ball out of their hands, like you yeah. were saying, it's just, you know, they, they want to get as many, as many touches, but McGill plays that hurry up offense that creates a lot more plays. Plays into their hands. Yep. Lacey came on a hard, hard count, and it was a bit of a delayed calls got a good crowd here tonight yeah Rev Zuniga playing some defense here but he, he... Coastal. black five yards first down. so second time Lacey's been able to get McGill to jump offside uh, K.J. Lacey asking one of the Saraland assistant coaches, Coach Boutwell, earlier this week. He said, Coach, is UTV 44 going to be doing the game this week? And Boutwell, you know, it's like Tuesday. He's like, I, I, don't, I don't know. know. That's not my, I don't have to deal with all that. But Boutwell didn't know it until tonight. Probably. Yeah, yeah. He said, oh, there's there's Jim and Dan. But uh, so K.J.'s like, well, if they're, they're kind of following the same schedule that they did last year, so I would expect they're going to be doing our game on Friday. <laughs> Quarterback, like he doesn't miss anything. He's got everything dialed in. He completes that one. Up to Alfred, and Alfred's going to have a first down as he's going to pick up 16. These kids are aware of us. They're aware that they're on TV when they are. And, uh, I mean, it's a lot of fun for us to be able to highlight these guys and these teams. And get to know them as sure. underneath the helmet. Yep. Uh, Alfred, who is having a really nice junior season. Got a couple of catches here tonight, over 300 yards now on the season and Sarah Land goes five wide here on this one. Lacey feels some pressure, scrambles out, and wants to throw it to the near side, puts it up for D's and that's over his over his head. You know, when you see that, you know, I, I heard a analyst on TV talking about arm strength for a quarterback and I thought he made a great point. He said, he said hey look, you know, arm strength isn't isn't any quarterback who can throw it 50 yards down the down the field. He said High, high school quarterbacks can do that. And he was talking about NFL quarterbacks. He said arm strength is being able to rip the ball from that far hash yep. when your feet aren't planted and get it to the near side, just like you saw right there. That's yep. arm strength. Yeah. And you, and He's got it. Yeah, and sometimes we think, oh, it's just how far can they throw it? What a great play. Or can they throw the fastball? You yep. know? Mitchell Adams, the sophomore, came in and made the stop. He'll bring up third and 11. to play Adams. Now, and this would be a big stop here for McGill's. McWilliams, how many, how many times do you think he's been hit for a loss this season? Not many. McGill playing great. Now they got to get, they got to get their defense off the field. Third and eleven, up at the forty-four. Lacey hangs this one up, looking for Dunklin, and he can't hang on to it at the ten. Adam, Myron Dunklin could not. A hold on to that one, and Saraland sends the punt team out. It's on the money, right? Yeah, it looked like Lacey hung that one up there, gave Dunklin a chance to run underneath it, and he's got, he's wide open in the middle of the field. Ooh, my goodness. Wow. Had one hand on it. I think he two hands that one, and he's got the touchdown. Yep. Now Dunklin will have to punt, and McGill with 10 up on the line of scrimmage. And with a high, high kick and takes a takes a Sarah Land bounce down to about the 22. So 
barring a disaster here, McGill's got a chance to get out of the first quarter, just down seven, Dan Brennan, and yeah. only giving up seven. They're, you know, with the defensive touchdown, their defense only giving up seven here. Yeah. In the, just a totally different team than we saw two weeks ago. Absolutely. And, uh, but, you know, the four, that other touchdown does count, too. You know, it works sure. against you. Sure, sure. So Sarah Land only one offensive touchdown, but the pick six gives them a 14 to seven lead. But it, and is it Sarah Land's been playing at such a high level all year? Is it is it naturally you have maybe a little bit of a letdown in one in one game? They clinch the region nine and zero. They, you know, kids know who they're playing and going nowhere there. Lenahan and this team has not had any type of letdown all all season, and yeah, you know, maybe you see a little bit of it here tonight. It's just it's hard to be. Yep. At that level, every every Friday night for two months. You see it in the pros, you see it in college, you have yep. ebbs and flows, no matter how talented the team is, are they ready to go that night? Uh, and this uh, Sarah Land team can turn it on at any time, but I like this kid, this uh, quarterback. Yes, yeah. Murchison. He's good. Second and 12, pressure coming now. Murchison nears. Oh, man, out of the backfield he had Lenahan. Yep little wheel route. Yep, and he had him on the linebacker, and he was going to have a chance to make a special play there. Agree. Let's watch as Murchison knows he's got a chance here at something special. Mm -mm. Just led him too far outside, and he knew it. Yeah, he don't get a lot of these against, a lot of those against this defense. A lot to like about this kid, and a lot to like about this offensive line so far tonight, anyway. Third and 12. Here they come. Pressure coming. Thrown incomplete to the near side, and Murchison just had to get that one away and not take the sack and not turn it over. And so a quick three and out on that one there. And David Faulkner was saying he's he's really getting a, a really solid grasp of this of this offense. You know, it's it's all new terminology. It's a new scheme. It's a new way to attack defenses and. It's a new one he's had to learn this year. And again, as a junior, I mean, he's going to be really fun to watch in that man's offense here at McGill next year. Yeah, I agree. You got you got you got to block for him. You got to make plays on the outside. Mike Smith back to punt, uh, back to receive the punt, and he'll do it right at midfield at the 50, and is immediately dropped. And then a flag comes in as Waters made the special teams tackle and yeah, blocking the back possibly. Yeah, putting a Sarah Landon. Less yeah. advantageous field position. That official got about 26 yards on that flag toss, too. I mean, <laughs> he saw something. Mm -hmm. So this will push Sarah and back into their own territory, just as Dan suspected would be the case. Watch at the bottom of the screen here. Yep, right at the 40. Yep, right. Mm. Right there, that was that was it. Okay. So we'll go back to the other 43 is KJ Lacey just tuning in. Texas commit. He's so smooth. Just smooth. A lot of poise. Let me tell you about poise here. Gives it to Sante McWilliams, and McWilliams will get about four on first down. Easier to have poise when you know what the heck you're doing, right? Yep. What have we heard about Lacey and him, you know, film room and all that? And Everything. Loves it. Yeah. I mean, it was, so, I mean, Bryce Young, what made him so special at Alabama was the way he saw yep. the game, the way he attacked defenses, the football acumen that he had. And you have a lot of coaches comparing this young man to him. To him. Lacey rockets this one to Dunklin, who makes that catch and spins off, and he's up to the 40. And he'll pick up 14 and a first down here. Roof Doctor's first down inside a minute to go in the first quarter. Well, you know, McGill's is playing completely differently than it. And I know they're down 14 to 7 and all. There's the replay. But notice the defense is there. Yep. I mean, against Theodore, they just were just out of place and uh, kind of disinterested. McWilliams down to the 29, and he'll get 12. And that'll be another Roof Doctor's first down. Yeah. A little delayed handoff there. Yeah, delayed handoff. McWilliams, you know, a, a, a quarter trying to get him to the ground, and you're like, you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to join the chess team. <laughs> <laughs> Very physical back for his, his size and just a wonderful kid. It's maybe our last play of the opening quarter. 
Looking for a little fade up the far side. And as soon as I say that, it's incomplete. And the clock doesn't run out as Dylan Alford, they look for him. Yeah, something was up on that. I, I, he was throwing over one shoulder, and Alford was thinking it was going to be more to the inside. Yeah, he's maybe maybe favoring his, his arm a little. And we've not seen Ryan Williams out there tonight. Man, not going to play much, maybe, is kind of what we're led to believe here tonight. Give back to McWilliams and Sante McWilliams inside the 20 down to the 14. That'll be another first down, and that will get Sarah Land into the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. It'll also get us to the end of the quarter here as they'll get this one spotted, and the clock will wind, and that will bring the quarter to a close. Good first quarter here, 14-7. 48-yard touchdown by Miller. Touchdown toss. The long toss set up the touchdown and a pick six in Sarah Land on top. 14-7 through one on Dr. Pepper's Friday Night Rival. Hey, we've uh, teamed up with Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola Bottling Company United to bring you the ultimate high school football experience and stay tuned for the Dr. Pepper one-of-a-kind player of the game and the winner's belt presentation at the end of the game end of the show might be some ostrich skin on it this week i've heard <laughs> uh, at the uh at the and in between the uh, quarters there they honored the dirty dozen mcgill's volleyball team state champions and the 23rd time they've won state 7a champions in volleyball sarah land runners up in volleyball yep uh, McGill Tulin, what a great tradition. Legacy. Yeah. And hard, hard count from the 14 again by Lacey. So yeah, what a what an honor for uh, uh, these young ladies. 20. It's 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 almost it's it's expected at McGill that the Dirty Dozen you're you're gonna have to win and uh, get they don't back into those. I mean you are you have no. gotta be so committed to. Volleyball, and there they are, the state champions. And 23rd time they've done it in school history. And see all of our volleyball champions there. You saw Mountain Brook beat Sarah Land to win the state championship there. And now up the left side and in for the touchdown, Sante McWilliams. AMS Calvert touchdown. And off that left side, McWilliams gets his second here tonight. Yeah, just come on up to the farm, young man. <laughs> and, uh, Santa's got quite a uh, quite a future. He's obviously a great student, comes from a great family, very humble kid, very, very good player. Great work on the left side. Yep, that uh, line starting to get their groove on now. Yeah, he's a junior, by the way. He's a, he'll That's be amazing to me. He'll be back next to make sure. Amnes Calvert <laughs> Innovations in Steel Strength by the People. Amnes Calvert Jobs.com. You can find out what all they're hiring for right now because they are doing exactly that in McGill. Gives up the touchdown here, the first play, and makes it 21-7 after the PAT by Singleton is good. Big win for Baker last night, beating Mountain Brook. How about that? 38-27. Jackson and Davidson last night. That was a big win for Jackson. UMS, 30 years in a row they've gone to the playoffs. Come from behind to beat Williamson last night, 20-19. Iron City Lanier, BC Rain and Gulf Shores today. Daphne and Hillcrest Evergreen. Briarwood and Fairhope. Fairhope was up, I think, 10-3 in that one last I, last I saw. Northridge and Bryant. Foley and Jackson. Olin tonight. Blunt and Murphy. It's 6-0. Blunt leading Murphy. Baldwin County and Robertsdale tonight. Theodore and St. Paul's. That's going to decide the number three and four seed in this region. It's 3-0 St. Paul's. Alberta and in action here tonight as well. And mm -hmm. let's see if a flag, no flag comes in at the end of that one. Is Welch got up to about the 23. So we are not playing flag football tonight. <laughs> How big, how about that sport just taking off? Going to be in the Olympics and taking off down here and yeah. everywhere. Really? So Brett, really Favre, Brett Favre on a, yep. on, a, on a show, podcast somewhere and talking about to you know, that's that's where that's where kids should be playing is that brand of football. I, I thought you were going to say far thinking about coming out of retirement once again to <laughs> come back and play. No, no, he's done. OK. At the 23. 
Miller brought down by Antonio Coleman. Miller and Coleman, Coleman on the stop. Boy, he's just, sometimes he's just unblockable. He just gets no, through no, the middle of the line and just. Well, who on McGill's line looks like that, yeah. first of all? When you add two of them together, it still doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't do it. It's two guys falling backwards. McGill's giving it all they got, I'll tell you that. Yep. Miller got one. They fake it to him, and Murchison rolls out. Thompson with pressure. Thompson hits him as he lets it go, and it's incomplete. Boom. I think Murchison yeah, felt that one a, a little bit as I Thompson. Think he, I think he did too. Thompson, big, strong kid. What'd you say? About 230. Yep. Right? Yeah. Thick kid. He hits you, you're going to feel it. Right, 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 breaking the double team again. Yeah, rolling right his way. Hit right as he released it in third and nine here for the Yellow Jackets. Just underway in the second quarter. Here they come. Yep. Murchison hit, delivers, and incomplete. I, I, I just appreciate that kid's moxie. He That's saw them coming. He hung in there, and he tried to make the pass. Took a big hit, and yeah, he knew they were, he knew they were coming. You could see it, and, in, and you could feel it. Watch the hit he takes. Right as he delivers it, it's Thompson. Up top and boy, that's hit the back of your head like yeah. that too. York Jeez. got him down low and gosh. So another three and out. And you're a tough guy, man. Appreciate you. And Mike Smith back at about the 45. Green had a snap. Look at everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Pressure coming. They block it again. Number eight out of the air bounces in the air. For a touchdown, Arboris Moffitt had a pick six last week and block number eight on the year for this Sarah Land team. And they get the touchdown. They've got a pick six and a special teams touchdown here. And that one went, we'll have to see who got their hands on it, but it went straight up in the air. I mean, it, oh, there we go. It was Lafitte it was came Lafitte, in. Right. And Lafitte who has a pick six tonight, has the block punt, and an early candidate for player of the game. And just like that, it's 28-7. Sarah Land on top of McGill. Eighth block punt of the year. Lafitte gets it. Moffitt. Gets the friendly hop for the score, and Sarah Land taking control of this one. Hi, welcome back to Lipscomb Field. Since 2016, Andy Citrin, injury attorney, has partnered with Friday Night Rivals, supporting student athletes in furthering education. Once again, Andy Citrin will award a $5,000 scholarship to one of our scholastic athletes. Thank you very much, Andy Citrin. Um, also tonight brought to you by AMNS Calvert. Innovations in steel, strengthened by people now hiring at amnscalvertjobs.com. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan here at the lip, and this one is kind of quickly gotten the way. A lot of games for that coaches teams have gone this year. 28-7, 28 unanswered by Sarah Land. They've done it on offense, defense, yep. special teams. Yeah, he, he. Onside kick here, and this one loose. And Sarah Land's going to get it, it looks like. Sarah Land says they have it, and so do the officials. Onside kick. Sarah Land wanted to take control of this game. Yeah, well, they, they've kind of already done that, but now here's the exclamation mark. And, and you know, you made a remark during the time out there that Jeff Kelly wasn't in a real good mood to start the game before the game I should say so they go the onside kick straight up the field and see that more and more it's a way to do it as those front defenders already turning around and racing yep. the other way yep. Lacey now wants to take a shot looks to the near side drops it in the basket at the 15 and down to the two Mike Smith the senior they're doing this pretty much without Hollywood. Yep, 43 Thank yards you. on the completion, and they're 24 yards into the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone already. Down to the one. First and goal for the Spartans. 
Boy, look, look at that motion on that throw. He just looks like he's so relaxed. So, you know, he, I'm not sure, I'm not sure he ever touched the ground here. Was he on top of the defender? Let's watch Mike Smith. Does he hit, does he hit the ground? Close call. Ooh. The back of the head might be on the ground. I don't I don't know. I don't know what constitutes being on the ground as far as the, the head. Here's a look. His shoulders hit down there, Jim. Just That's inside good. the one, yeah. yeah. And now false start against the Spartans. That'll back him up to the six. Jeff went in a great mood before the game, which is pretty common, but... Uh, <laughs> just on Fridays, this could be a bit... Uh, just uh, he, he, likes, he likes to get here to have the game just get here so they can play. Exactly. Then McGill comes out and does a few things. Well, score first in yep. four plays. and uh, Dominated the kick, the, the, the coin toss, too. They dominated <laughs> they, the coin toss. They did, and so you know, he had, a, he had a chance to get his team's attention here. Lacey against the pressure. Heaves that one up and over the head of Dunklin. Is pressure was coming, and Lacey just didn't have much time to get rid of that one and threw it over the head of Dunklin. But I agree with what you said during the break was he, he was waiting. He was looking for something to kind of jump his team a little bit. And they gave it to him. Yep. And so second and goal back at the seven. Nick Williams in the backfield. Smith in motion. Lacey gives it to McWilliams right up the middle and down to about the original line of scrimmage to the two. It'll bring up third and goal from the two. McWilliams already with two touchdowns here this evening. He's a really, really good back. Another year to go. Yep, as does that young man, K.J. Lacey, going to Texas. He was at Auburn last weekend, enjoying a visit at Auburn last weekend. Probably wanted to stuff him in a closet. <laughs> Right back to McWilliams on the right side. He drops the shoulder, and he's got his third touchdown of the night. McWilliams takes it in for six. AMS Calvert touchdown for Sante McWilliams. Three on the night, 18 on the year. And the Mr. Polite was going to get the football for the official. Did yeah. you see that after he scored the touchdown? Look the old American kid right here. Watch. Look at on the right side. Just yeah, he lowers that shoulder. He's going to get in. Now he's like, I dropped it, so I'll get it. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love that kid. And Singleton makes it 35 7, three minutes into the third, and Sarah Land's found yeah, their yeah. usual groove, it appears. Yeah, it, it, it uh, does appear that. And now it's a matter of how do you slow them down? McGill with their fast paced offense, you know, they just kept. If you're not getting those first downs, you're just giving the ball right back to Sarah Lane. Yeah, we've seen the three and outs. So it all started with the onside kick and really caught McGill mm -hmm. off guard there and gave him great field, field position as it was Kingston Bush, the fullback who recovered that onside kick. And then this one down to the two, Mike Smith. And then Sante McWilliams and Kingston puts a big boot into this one. And Welch out to about the 24. And you're, 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 you're thinking about that. You're thinking, okay, do we want to hold that kick for the playoffs? Or now you put it in there and now you give team something else to think about mm -hmm. it maybe you got another onside kick that they're right. if you're thinking onside kick situation well we saw him do this well now they do do that I, I'm First to 10, yellow jacket. Yeah, it's, an, it's not enough that they're so talented because they are and I, you know when I say talented I mean not just the guys all going to the SEC but the team as a whole has got great team speed you've got yep. athletes all over the place they block kicks they cover kickoffs they do everything well. Yeah, and, and then you got some just really great high school football players, yeah. which win you a lot of games on Friday night, just no, having really good high school football players. No doubt. Murchison after the big hit last time, fires this one, and Stanton can't hold on to that one. Hmm. Hey, he had him open. Yep. Had, a, had a big cushion. Murchison disappointed with himself. I mean, if you are, like, so McAdory will play the Sarah Land team in the first round of the playoffs, it's just... Like you 
you're just watching that game film and you're just like you're just like Oof. Uh, this is without Ryan Williams yep. tonight. Yep. He could go if really needed. But I also think you you like to get some other kids some reps as this one will be complete. Bring up third and long behind the sticks again. Talking about right there. There's the kid going to Memphis, right? And uh, and Jamison and and they just got guys like that all over the field. After the onside kick, four plays, a minute 18 is all the scoring drive needed for Sarahland on top 35-7. Not only are you the are you the athlete to make the tackle, are you the athlete to to get off the block? Yep, and that's what they've got. Third and 11, Murchison fires this one incomplete. And Murchison, boy, his he's really showing off some arm strength here yeah. tonight. Yeah. He you was know, say one thing too, like this. This McGill team has not come out here in awe of Saraland. Mm -mm. They, they didn't. Not at all. You know, didn't look like they. Didn't look like. Um, they just didn't look like this against Theodore, even though the score is similar, yeah. it's a much different effort in the way they've played here. Yeah, I agree. And and it's, it, it's you know, you say, what, what are you guys talking about? It's 35 to seven, but the manner in which the game has been played has been a lot more competitive than we saw before. End over end kick and it's down inside the 40, down to the 38 by Henry Green. And we'll take a time out. Four minutes gone by in the second, 35 unanswered by the Spartans. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan yelling a lot less than that young man, Jeff <laughs> Kelly, over there on the sidelines. It's not our job to yell. Sometimes you, as a, as a coach, you've you got you to yell. It's not, our, it's not what we do up here on Friday he, nights. He was making his point before the game. It had to do with clothing accessories. Not happy. Not a fan. Not a, not a fan. So back at the 39. Lacey shows off the arm again to the near side, looking for Dunklin, and that's going to be pass interference as Dunklin got grabbed and wrapped up there. And Dunklin, I thought, smart play as well to kind of turn himself back into the defender. Yeah. Sam Lewis back there on the coverage. Dunklin's a good player, and, and we've seen him on a lot of fly patterns through the years, previously on Blunt. Yep, so another, Alan, good, another good throw, Jim. Yep, Alan Duhon gets the ball there. And you know, sometimes the DB, especially in, when it's just 15 yards, it's like, yeah, that, that's just a good open field tackle <laughs> to, to prevent the touchdown, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was a little behind him. Yep. So the, the, if uh, the corner had turned his head, but this, you know, easier said than done. You're, you're chasing, you're behind. You're just trying to catch up. So moves it up to the 44. Lacey looks over to the Saraland sideline and passes the play along as Kingston Bush, the lone running back, play clock down to two. Fake to Bush, cross the middle, get it off to Jordan Dees, and he's going to have a first down, breaks a tackle at the 35. Jordan Dees all the way down to the 18-yard line. Lacey to Dees. 38-yard pickup. And into the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. Just another weapon that you have at your disposal. The 6'4", 205 pound Jordan Dees. 13th catch on the year. I mean, he's kind of underutilized for his, for his absolute ability. Down at the 18. Give this one off. And the flag comes up as Kingston Bush, who's Usually a fullback, but they'll Bush on the spell him in there as well. And, you know, if you're going we'll talk, we'll get the penalty here from probably be a holding call here from Alan Duhon. Always good to see Alan on the sideline. Yep. For the games. So, you know, if you're if you're Sarah Lane on this game, so this game doesn't impact anything. You've already you've won the region. You're going to be the number one seed. McGill's out. McGill's not going to the uh, playoffs. So if you're Sarah Lane, you 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 want to play, but you you you, you want to 
protect some some players sure. that maybe you, you, you can, but you also, you know, uh, you know, these kids want to play. High you only get so many of these Fridays, right? You want to play. Uh, agree. Pressure coming this time. Lacey gets hit. Corner looking for Dunklin. Tipped up and incomplete. And now a flag comes in at the end of this one. Double coverage there. Well, the official was right there. So what exactly did he see? Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper right, replay. Maybe we'll see it here. Lacey. Ooh, wow. Face, is that still a rule yeah, where you man. can't put your hands ah, in boy, I, I, their face? He didn't I prevent mean, him from catching the ball. That's No, and the safety was playing the ball. Yeah. The corner was chasing again. Wow, tough call on McGill right there. That's tough. Yep. That's tough. That's tough. And two pass interference calls on this play, on this. This drive? Drive, yeah. So first down here for the Spartans. Lacey fires, able to get that one to D's, and he's got the touchdown. Where in the world is this guy? <laughs> they kept that Maserati in the garage. <laughs> so Jordan D's with the touchdown had the big catch in the first quarter. Good and looking player. Lacey with a rope on an AMS Calvert touchdown. Just, I mean, he's just he's six four. James Jackson, just a sophomore. AMS Calvert. Innovation and Steel strengthened by people now hiring at AMS Calvertjobs.com. And the PAT is good. And it's 42 7. We've got seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Number one team in the state looking to make it 16 in a row. Defending state champions rolling again here tonight. Tonight's action brought to you in part by the Mobile County Sheriff's Office, providing a challenging and interesting job opportunity. You can join Team Sheriff today at teamsheriff.org. Also brought to you by IBEW. It's the largest electrical union in the world, representing workers' rights in all areas of the electrical and telecommunications industries. Thank you for bringing us high school football. Beautiful night for football. We didn't have rain one single Friday, did we? We haven't had much rain. We're 11 inches behind yeah, on the, the year. Yeah, my, my, I had my sprinklers going today. Shamar Welch trying to get to the outside. Now reverses, and he's going to get out to about the 22-yard line. He had a chance. Yep. I thought he undersold his own chance right there. but the Kind of got jammed up with his own teammate there in yep. front of him. Yep. And now with seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Offensively here, what do you do to... Ball Slow down Sarah Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Get a couple that, of first downs and not give him the ball back. And they just haven't been able to do much of that after that first drive. The yeah, first drive was impressive. Yep. Um, Four plays in the end zone. Murchison on the give and nothing doing back there as the freshman Ladarian Miller, who's got the 48 yard touchdown, was. Brought down there, but somebody grab a face mask. Yeah. Here? McGill is not a very big team. McGill with six first downs and now they wave off the oh, wow. officials got together and that does not that does not make some of the yellow jacket fans down in front of us very happy. His Antonio Coleman. So they should wind that clock again. There we go. So a loss of eight, second and 18. Murchison right back up to Miller and Lafitte in there to bring up third down. 
Uh, since that opening drive, really just not much going here for Lafitte on the stop. McGill. Well, Lafitte's had a night, hasn't he? Yeah. Pick six, block kick. Man. And just making a pile plays. of tackles. Yeah, I was going to say making plays all over the field. All around that. Miller in the backfield with Murchison. Murchison climbs the pocket. Now looks to air it out, wanting to come the near side, and it's over the head of. I thought he was going for Roscoe Haywood. Instead, it was Rev Zuniga. He got hit again. He got hit again after he let that one go. I do believe. Another very quick three, and out here. Boy, you you. No, he didn't get hit again. Okay, well that's good news. Boy, you like his mechanics. You like everything in the. Yeah. He climbs the pocket. Yep. They they block well for him on that play. You know, we're talking about McGill uh, and, and this being their last game of the year at five and four. We, we, we can't we'll come back to that after the punt because eight times things have gone a little haywire on punts yep. uh, against Sarah Land this year. And Henry Green, a good punt here. And bounces inside the 50 and McGill will down out there at the 46. I say, you know, you've got St. Paul's and Theodore playing tonight to see who's going to be the three or the four seeds. 3-0 St. Paul's at the half. McGill, week two, lost to that, lost to St. Paul's 14-6. And so it, one touchdown, the difference between being in the playoffs and, and not. You yep. win that game, you win the tiebreaker, and you would be in the playoffs. And one touchdown uh, yep. out of all, out of 10, 10 games. It's always interesting when you get to the playoffs, Jim, because you, you know what you think of your teams locally. But then you find out how they stack up against uh, the state in general and yep. other parts of the state. Lacey, that went a little low and incomplete as he tried to get it off to Dylan Alford. And an incomplete there on first down. But you, you, know, you, you, you can see where this McGill team will will grow under David Faulkner. You. you you, you really see, you know what you know what he's capable of. Yep. He's very it's methodical. Yep, very high level coach and Kingston Bush here going to get the first down up to the 35. And again, it's just some continuity, get things Boy, going, and um, and you, and you know because it's a I mean this this region down here like it's not it's not changing anytime no, soon. It's, no, it's nowhere to play around. You also need players. Down. Yep. As we're closing in on five and a half here in the second quarter. And now you see Sarah Land, they're, they're now using up a whole bunch of yep. the, uh, the play clock. And Slowing, I think way down, part right. of that is some mutual respect for mm -hmm. Jeff Kelly has for David Faulkner over on this sideline. Lacey, what a one-handed catch there by Dunklin. It makes a move at the 25, another one at the 20. And Dunklin, a flag comes in. At the end of this one, on the block in the back down there at the end of that play. Maybe because I saw applause on the McGill side, so it might have been something against Sarah Land. How about the catch by Dunklin? Yeah. Well, I didn't think he did catch it. I thought that was an incompletion. And then so flag was thrown down at the yeah. 16. That's yeah, going to go against. Uh, it's going to go against Sarah Land. Alan Duhon, tell us what y'all saw. Oh, blindside block. Mm. And there was, I mean, Dunklin was surrounded by a bunch of yellow jackets. Let's watch it here at the at the end. Maybe something wasn't even needed, Dunklin. So he gets, he's gonna get kind of wrapped up here. Oh, yeah, that was that was it. Mike mm. Smith with the line side block huh. right there. Didn't okay. re yeah, didn't need to do that. And that it does result in a first down, but it'll, it'll be a first and five from the 31 after the 15 yard penalty. And Bush has got a first down for Sarah Land inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line as he picks up 14 on first down into the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. 
Running some clock down. here by running the ball. And then on four and a half to go. McAdory is who Sarah Land will play up in Sarah Land next week. How about that fireworks show for senior at the end of the game in Sarah Land last week? That was phenomenal. I mean, there's, I a, mean, lot of, there's a lot of municipalities that don't put on that type of fireworks show on Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was it just, just kept going and going. And the end of the game. I was on the interstate and it was still going. Me too. Of course, we had the valley parking that helped to get us out quickly well, at Sarah Land. That, we that, that are helped. committed. <laughs> Post game committed athletes let's getting to the yeah Lacey let's beat the crowd play clock go all the way down to one and then they take a timeout with 4:09 to go here it's like maybe Patriots maybe didn't get that play in from Coach Kelly over there and took the took the timeout again just started last year as a sophomore took him to a state championship game only lost one game to Theodore and. Coming up at halftime, have a very special halftime show, the IBW local 505 halftime show. We've got a special halftime show coming up here tonight at McGill Tulin here at place they call the Lip. Mm. When? How long? How long have we been? When did they build this, Dan? Back in I the. I think it was, uh, you know, probably around 07, maybe. Or something, yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah. It's been a. I think we, we did some McGill games with Lad for sure. Uh, uh, for it's no, we started in. 2000. Yep. Zach's last year at McGill was playing was 1999. He graduated in 2000. So the fall of 2000 is when we started on Comcast. Yep. Where nine or 12 people would watch every week. <laughs> <laughs> we were just learning how to do it. So that was good. Yeah, oh, that was. Uh, we didn't you, need a big audience you back could, then. You couldn't see the games in Baldwin County. You couldn't see them in certain other uh, parts. You could see them. You had to have Comcast to see them. And. Uh, now right, you that see, might have been best. Now, now you see them all. <laughs> now you can see them all, all over. All right. After the timeout, first and ten at the fifteen. Lacey gets it off to Dees. He's wide open. Dees tries to hurdle, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the one. I'm not quite sure. How did that happen? Had no one around him. No one around. Him. Not like he hasn't had a game. Watch here. Quickly out to him. So, don't know. Linebacker, corner, somebody where they where uh, they were occupied elsewhere. Clo closest person to him was Jared Kihas, our camera guy on the yeah, sideline. Yeah, I agree. Kihas wanted no part of that hurdle. They just he bailed, <laughs> totally bailed out. Wanted no no part of that. First and goal at the one. Bush into the end zone, and a late flag comes in as. Mm. Pushes in. The flag on the pancake. Yeah, I mean, block. It, and then we got a little pushing and shoving here. Now we get another. Was, oh no, they're just replacing the, the flag. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was it was well after the touchdown. It seemed to be. And yeah, there was. Hmm. Like you said, it looked like a. Thought Bryson Chastain was down there. Hmm. Interesting. And so they. It was not a dead ball. It's within the course of the play, a block. <laughs> It'll be first and goal from the 11 yard, yard line. Huh. All right, so back to the 11. So a 10 yard penalty. And first and goal. Kind of like a kind of the Bronx cheer for the referee, I think, here by the home <laughs> by the home crowd. Lacey. Man, big turnout tonight. Big turnout. S senior night. Lacey fakes. Rolls end zone. Dees has got it this time for the touchdown. Lacey to Dees for six. So Dees got it down to the one. And this time he gets it in for the AMS Calvert touchdown. Boy, Lacey felt the pressure coming, just calmly reverses away. And yep. And that's talking about the poise. The poise to know you can turn your back. That's a good look, but it's a better catch. You can turn your back to the defense 
and have a real clear idea when you spin around where you're going with the ball. And that's because he knows how to play. He knows where, where he has an idea of what's going to be open on that play, considering the face that lead to it. And he turned and the play was there. But that's what leads to poise is knowing what you're doing. Jeff Kelly has talked about he's put so much more on this young man, number nine, at quarterback K.J. Lacey this year, just the maturation process of a quarterback. And he's mm -hmm. able to put more on him pre-snap. Yep. Gives gives your offense more options. He's, ha he's happy to take it. Yep. He's happy to take it on. When we hear things like that, very impressive. Yeah. Again, led this team to the state championship as a sophomore last year. He went 14 and one. Only loss was to Theodore and avenged that loss in the playoffs. Big Antonio Coleman, man who leads the defense, the tip of the spear. And Saraland has scored 49 unanswered. This one bounces and will go out of bounds. Okay. So up to the 35 for McGill's offense, who has just been on a three and out run here that they need to stop. Saraland gets it back to start the second half. They'll start at the 35, so. Yep. A little better field position there for Murchison. And First and 10, Yellow Jackets ball will be spotted on the 35 yard line. They've been trying to go wide, Jim, and that's. That's been that's been resulting in second and 15. Yeah. I mean, not even just getting to the line of scrimmage, but uh, Sarah Land really moving him back, penetrating. Yeah, they've been behind the stick so yeah, they have, and not many penalties. It's been more just Sarah Land's defense overwhelming this line of this uh, offensive line. Lenahan, the sophomore in the backfield, they zip it out near side. Able to get that one complete across the 40 and. Out of bounds up to the 42 yard line. Zuniga will pick up eight on first down. Saw him in the uh, pregame, part of the senior night yep. experience. Really, really nice. Kids and their parents, and it's uh, it's it's a cool night. And just you know, so many of these young men out here on the in the black and orange. This will be the last time they play play football. Yep. Murchison was trying to draw him offside, but here's talking about before the before the game. You got Trey Waters there, one of the one of the seniors. There he is. That's Zuniga. That's the Zuniga, right? other Zuniga brother, the senior, the Ashton Zuniga cheerleaders. Yep. Here tonight and pretty cool. They did not get penalized like Saraland last week for the senior night that went into overtime. Little long, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the game we did against Theodore. Murchison looking, Got hangs him. this one out to Zuniga. Can he run under it? He can for the touchdown. Yellow Jackets, 62 yards. You know, it's easy to be impressed. It's, it's, it's easy to be impressed with K.J. Lacey for so many reasons, but how about this kid? Yep. Getting knocked down, kicked around, pushed around. 12th touchdown toss of the year, fourth touchdown reception for Zuniga. And just rainbowed that thing up. 30 to the 20, 50 yards in the air. How does receiver to run out? We got a bunch of new numbers out there on defense for Sarah Land. And Green coming over on the year. He's now 34 of 36 on PATs this year for the Yellow Jackets. And that stops a 49-0 run by Sarah Land. But, you know, you're happy for Murchison to get that. He's taken, like you said, a bunch of hits. He's hung in there. He's gone through his progressions, his reads, and now he gets a chance, and he yeah. takes the shot down the field gets a touchdown. You know, that's what's so beautiful about about what we do on these Friday nights. We get the chance. We're watching this kid competing like crazy, not getting a lot of dividends, right? Nothing's yep. coming back to him, but he, he remained committed to the fight, and now he gets a nice, beautiful touchdown. Yep, coming right. Hatches Zuniga with the, with the score. And... What a... 
Take some positives away from taking where you can get him in a game like this. No kidding. And David Faulkner, happy to see that one. Again, he's a junior, so coming back from McGill next year. Yep. And you got a freshman running back who's super talented. Now, you got to fortify that line of scrimmage, too, Jim. Yep. Don't talk about him a lot, but that's a that's green, pretty big deal. Pooches this one in Dunklin with the flag at the 30, and Another Dunklin up, block in the back. Yep, up to about the 34, and that'll come, that'll come back. So I was spent last weekend, as you mentioned, in, in Los Angeles, and I was, I was in the suburbs, Burbank, where all the studios are, mm -hmm. uh, right there by Hollywood. And, oh, I know uh, it well. Yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you here, but I mean, a big metropolitan area. We get the call from Alan Duhon. Uh, but showing them, like, pictures from somewhere at Saraline last week with the Jumbotron, texting them a picture here tonight from it. They're like, wait, at a high school game? Yeah. yeah I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they live, it's like, college football's, you know, football's pretty big in California, too. Yeah, yeah. But they were just absolutely, as I see our scoring drive there, two plays, 65 yards. They were, they, they could, and they're all sports fans, and they just they couldn't believe it. Mm. They're like, this is, that's unbelievable. That, 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 that's really, uh, that says something. Like you said, they are sports fans. I mean, you, you met them to go to the game, yeah, right? Yeah, right. So they are sports fans, and still they were overwhelmed by what they saw, the images of high school football in South Alabama. Yeah, for sure. They just couldn't couldn't get over it. Like jumbotrons and everything else. And they're like, at a game, I'm like, yeah, everybody's got I'm like, yeah. everybody's, It's a bit of an arms race now <laughs> to see who can get the biggest <laughs> and, the, and the best. Well, so far, Sarah Land wins. Yes. Uh, that's not uh, nothing no, slouchy about the one here. Heck no. Now, Sante McWilliams comes back in in the backfield. And a pitch and catch again up to D's, and that'll be good for a, another first down. Roof Doctor's first down for the Yellow Jackets as we approach three minutes to go. I mean, it's just, it, it, we're just we're almost numb to it because we're around it so, so often, but it, 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 just, it just means more here than it does a lot, of, a lot of places. And it means a lot in a lot of places. Yeah, it does. Another flag before the... Snap here. But the subtlety of it all, too. You know, you look at this box score, or you look at, you read the score, or you turn away from the game because it's not close. Well, we've got no choice. We're sticking it out, right? <laughs> and when you stick it out, you see some things that really. Yep. And you'd be happy for kids. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Happy for kids who are just, this is, you, you sometimes get so enamored with the kid going to Texas or the kid going to Bama. It's like, well, yeah, well, let's not forget about. All the kids are out here just playing because they love yep. being a high school football player. Absolutely. McWilliams up to the 39. Uh, move the chains again to the Roof Doctors first down. McWilliams sharing a lot of time tonight. Now, and, you know, so many of these players on offense for Sarah Land, if they were on a different team, they would be the featured Mm -hmm. Player on offense. Yep. The feature player on offense has not even been on the field this evening. That's how good this team is. And he's remarkable. Lacey, you know, he's going to pull it down and take off and run and slides down. He knows where his bread is buttered, right? Bus business decision. Yep. Nothing against that at all. Nope. You know, I, I, you know like I'm. I love to see rules to protect quarterbacks because when when the premier quarterbacks aren't hurt and, and playing, the football is more fun to watch. No kidding. This is, it is. Lacey, far side, Dunklin spins and he's going to have a first down into Yellow Jacket territory and up to the 43. Dunklin at 15, snatching that ball out of the air yeah. too. Dunklin, he's big. He's six foot, 190 pounds. Yep. He's kind of a, he's a load to bring down. Yeah, he's thick. Lost his shoe. We near a minute and a half to go in the first half here. Get you some scores as we get close to halftime. McWilliams, look at the blockers out in front. Jim, look at the way he uses the blockers, too. Yeah. McWilliams on the carry, Welch on the side. Right on their hip. Gets up to the 35, gains eight, a couple short of the first down. Boy, I think Sarah Lamp, they 
get one here, and you probably don't have to see a lot of players in the second half. Yeah, maybe maybe one drive will send them out there. Yep. Lacey fires this one into the corner, and Dees has got it for another touchdown. What a throw by Lacey and Dees. And, and it looked like there was good coverage back there. Mm. AMS s Calvert touchdown. And Jordan Dees with another here tonight. And Sarah Land looking like Sarah Land. Watch this ball placement here. That's what they call it, right? Ball placement. Yeah. Like, did you throw it in a good spot? Yeah, he had, he had, had a step. double coverage, but he had them beat. And he is in easily. That one just landed in his lap. Second touchdown here tonight. Receiving four. Dees and PAT is good. It's 56 to 14 here at the half. We're not even officially at the half yet. As Dees looks on after the score there. You know, Sierra Land band was right there as he's uh, celebrating. They've been out of their seats. They leave with the six minute mark of the second period. Those seats have been vacant for a while. This yeah. is the, they've really piled up some big plays in the last six minutes. Yeah, well, there's been 42 points in this quarter, so that that'll that'll do it. They'll slow the pace down uh, just a bit. Welch has a little gap at the 30, and Shamar Welch lost the football, recovered by Sarah Land at the 49. Mm. Kicker. Tucker Singleton with the fumble recovery. He wants to make sure everybody knows he's got it, too. <laughs> Should go back. That was the third touchdown for Jordan Dees. It's oh hard boy. to keep track of him. And then Welch, who's a little slow to get up here. Mm, young man who just committed to Troy last week. A big honor and call to Marshall last night at Troy. Big, big honor up there last night for him. Welch just had it knocked away from from behind and Singleton. Maybe the all-time fumble recovering kicker in Sarah Land history now may have just moved, <laughs> moved to that moved to that title I love the way he came off like a wide receiver scoring a touch he came off like an airplane and he's showing the ball and good for him yeah, look at look at Lacey on the night 13 and 19 256 three yeah. tutties yeah and Singleton with the recovery and then he's Lacey is done for the night as Gage Weaver is going to come in here and probably hand the ball off would be my guess. Yeah, with 49 seconds to go here in the half. I would like to look back and see what Sarah Land averages in the first half of games. Yeah, you're right. My guess is 35. Yeah, they average 52 a game, and a lot of games have just been, you know, they you know, they hung 70. On, that was a school record. They scored 70 points against Foley. That was a school record. They had set a school record this year for the biggest winning margin when they beat Robertsdale 66 to nothing. So yeah, what is their what is their their average in the first half? And again, a lot of these a lot of these gaudy numbers you see and a lot of these players play half the half, half the, the game. Half, yep. And again, but it, they do score more in, in, in the first half than most teams do in, in, in four game. quarters, right? Yeah, I would say they average more than most teams average for in an entire game. That'd be look, my at that, guess. look at that, a smile on a Friday yeah. over there from uh, yeah. the head coach. So Gage Weaver comes in and hands it off to Bush. And Bush with a big hit, lost Ooh, his helmet on man. that one. That was a huge hit. I think that was Lars Hansen, the sophomore that just squared him up. That might have been Hansen. Oof, watch this. This is dangerous. That helmet comes off, and he's not even not near the ground yet. I know it wasn't Lars Hansen. I mean, it was Lamarian Miller. Oh, he was hanging on to the ball, too. Yeah. So he was about to be involved in a play where more bodies were going to be jumping all around him. Mm -hmm. 
Gee whiz, I'm glad he's okay. There's Gage Weaver. Junior backup quarterback and inside give and the Warwick Jones with his first carry That's tonight, 26th on the night. That should bring the half to a close. Crazy, I still see a lot of effort from McGill. I really yeah. do. Yeah, so that'll bring the first half to a close. 56, 14, Saraland. Top team in the state defending 6A champions and looking every bit of it here tonight. Looking to close out another perfect season. Could be the second one in school history and they've been dang near perfect in all three phases of the game <laughs> here tonight. So a very special and emotional night uh, here at, at McGill, especially for guys standing next to me that I love so much. Uh, Dan Brennan, his son, Zach Miller. Um, a lot of you uh, know the history as Dan uh, talked about him on the radio a lot and, and struggles when he passed away back in 2021 with a brief battle with brain cancer. Navy SEAL, amazing young man. And, uh, but the, a great dedication here tonight, the field house in, in Zach's name, right, Dan? Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, Zach is Zach was one of a kind, and uh, there Zach is with his little brother Joseph. Uh, you know, he had a kind heart, but a war warrior's mentality. And uh, there you go. Uh, you know, it, it was such a pleasure to be part of raising Zach. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. I met him when he was eight. I married his mother when he was nine, and uh, he got sick in. May of 2021, and I remember our last phone conversation just days before suddenly he passed, and it was, uh, it's a conversation I'll never forget, but the point is that uh, I wasn't the only one that loved Zach. Uh, he was loved by so many because... So he many loved a lot of people. He loved a lot of people. That was just who he was. I got a chance to sit down with uh, Bill Griffin, who's the athletic director today, uh, but Bill was... Perry on the scene, and you'll hear from his stories. He was his line coach at McGill his senior year. That was a big turnaround season for the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets. And if you don't think I didn't love that kid, <laughs> man, oh, man. And you'd have to be a nitwit not to love him. <laughs> you'd have to be an absolute nitwit. Yeah, he was, a, he was special in so, so many, so many ways. And uh, let's find out uh, even just a little, bit, a little bit more about an amazing American hero, yes. Zach Miller. Bill, um, you coached Zach. I did. And it's amazing how, even though it's been so many years, coaches remember players. You remember situations. Give me a few that Zach was involved in. You know, Zach, Zach was the leader uh, of the offensive line because uh, at that time, like I said, with the zone blocking schemes, he called whether they were going to be up or whether they were going to have their hands on the ground in a three-point stance. And he, he, he called all of the... Uh, the blocking assignments so you know that I can't help but the the leadership that he displayed as a football player helped him you know in the Navy mm -hmm. uh, he was a guy that everybody yeah. liked I mean and uh, he, he was friends with everybody he might not be best friends with them but he was friendly to everybody mm -hmm. and and I think that's what people really remember about Zach and you know he could he could be a terror on the football field but in the locker room in the in the classroom, hanging out on the weekends, he was a he was a guy mm -hmm. and he was a good guy. Yeah. And I, and I think that's what um, had, had prompted you know his buddies to uh, do these fundraisers to to have something to remember Zach by and something that Zach really cared about here at McGill and McGill was a part of him and now he will always be a part of McGill football. Our last game, a uh, regular season game before the playoffs that year, we played Satsuma. Right. And uh, I got a picture here that a buddy of mine took after that game. And uh, Jason, Jason it, was, it was my offensive line grouped together. And uh, we, I think we rushed for nearly 300 yards that, mm -hmm. that uh, game. And, uh, and he snapped that picture of us. And I've had, that, I've had this picture in my office ever since then. And John Jensen, our offense coordinator, 
gave me this quote, and I thought it was very appropriate to put on this picture of the offensive lineman. It says, a lineman stood at the pearly gates. His face was scarred and cold as he stood and glared at the man of faith for admission to the fold. What have you done, St. Peter asked, to gain admission here? I've been a lineman, sir, he said, for many and many a year. The pearly gate swung open wide as St. Peter rang the bell. Come on in and choose your heart, for you've seen your share of hell. <laughs> and that was that. Yep. The best Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. Got to throw over the top again, and this is, oh my oh. goodness, did he pull that in? He, he sure did. did, incredible catch. That's Isaac Thomas, the senior. That's the best start look at him. And he's going to fake, he's going to throw, and has a man, Aiden Smalls gets away. This is trouble. There goes Smalls on a fake punt. Touchdown, Cardinals. Taking care of the ball. Here he is the throw now. Big pressure. pressure on the rollout. Ward looking uh -oh. downfield, loading up, throwing deep, middle of the field. Got a man and he makes the catch at the 20 yard line. Keith Collins came down with it. Incredible catch by Collins, the senior wide receiver. Just a phenomenal uh, athletic play because he was triple team. He should be the way this team plays. Double pass coming. Lacey gets it to Ryan Williams. Santamon Williams touchdown. He realizes right away he's got to get rid of it. Watch how quickly he gets rid of it. Boom, I got to go. I got to go now. Get in the right play, and if they make plays, that's uh, kind of a cherry on the top. Get him out under the lights. Here is Roman Thompson again. And boy, has he looked good in a short amount of time. He's stiff-arming his way down the sideline, and Roman Thompson is gone. Oh! <laughs> A little, uh, little love for the home team there from our highlights last week with Sarah Land with the win over Theodore. That Ryan Williams touchdown pass to Sante McWilliams. Tonight, McWilliams, a couple of touchdowns early in this one. And Jordan Dees with three touchdowns tonight. A pick six and a block punt touchdown as well. And Sarah Land, who fell behind 7-0 in this game, has taken this one over at the half, 56-14. It all started with that... Big matchup on ESPN for the Spartans this year when they won in overtime against Lipscomb Academy. 31-30, they get the win, and then they just keep rolling. They really haven't been challenged since then. And you saw everything they've done. You've just given up 10 points a game, and some of those points come in late in their games. We talked about the 70 points they scored against Foley and the 66-point winning margin they had against Robertsdale, both school records. And looks like they're going to close things out here. Be another perfect season. They clinched the region last week against Theodore. Uh, first region championships tw since 2019. Uh, they went 10 and 0 that year. And, and you see what McGill did. They just a uh, really good Montgomery Catholics team they lost to. And then that tough one at St. Paul's 14 6. And that, that eight points, the difference between them being in number three or four seed yep. and not going to the playoffs as yep. they got it got it going together in the middle part of the the season there had the big win over st michael and that's really that's going to grow into a really good rivalry here on the gulf coast yeah, that's something else that they're dealing with that the mcgill teams in the past really yeah. weren't dealing with yeah you got all, all these kids that used to cross the bay well, yep. many of them would actually cross the bay sure to attend a catholic school there was one opportunity one choice it was mcgill tool and now there's two yep and they righted themselves with a win against Blunt last week, so probably going to close out 5-5 five and five, uh, on the year. And you see the region standings, Sarah Land there on the top, Spanish Fort, Theodore, and St. Paul's. And those two teams playing right now still 3-0 last we had. So the winner of that, Theodore, I'm like drawing on the screen <laughs> as if I have a telestrator here. Yeah. Nobody can see. Uh, You're helping me. There, okay, so there we that's go. that's enough. Theodore and St. Paul's, so whoever wins that game, mm -hmm. they will be the three seed and not not the four seed. Either team's going to have to go on the road. One's going to go to Hueytown, and 
So anyway, that, that'll be that'll be it. And then McGill is going to be finishing up uh, at number five in the region. And Sarah Land, you know, not unanimous. We've got some folks voting for Clay Chalkville as the number one team in the state. Yeah, it's hard to believe, really, that. And maybe we have some bias and some recency bias down here because we've seen Sarah Land the past couple of weeks. But yeah, they're the. They, yeah, yeah well, they did beat Thompson a few weeks ago. Clay Chalkville had the win oh, yeah, over yeah, Thompson early seven in the eight, season. 7A, you know, yeah, defending yeah. uh, 36 straight time champ or whatever. How many right, well, that's, that's <laughs> enough to get your attention. Though. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, so that's that's it. So, you got Baker's going to be at home. Mary G is going to be at home. Davidson, how about the Warriors going to the playoffs? They're going to go to Central Phoenix City. You know a little bit about that town. I do. <laughs> You used to live right across the border, right? Well, do I need to get it? No, I'm not going to talk about Dan Brennan Day in Phoenix City, though there was we, one. We, we might have time in the second half. Save it for the <laughs> second half. I'll be happy then to. Then you see Daphne going to go on the road as well. Daphne beating Hillcrest Evergreen right now. McAdory and Sarah Land. So then you got Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, and you got Hueytown and Spanish Fort, and Bessemer will match up. So we'll have home games at the Fort and at Sarah Land. And then so if Theodore... If Theodore were to win tonight, they will take on Hueytown. If St. Paul's were to win, they take on Hueytown. The loser will take on Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. So uh, I don't think either you know, you're, you, I don't think either one of those uh, matchups you're super excited about having to go face. But I think if you're either Hueytown or Hue, uh, Tuscaloosa, Hillcrest, you, Hillcrest Tuscaloosa, you're not excited to play Theodore or St. Paul's either. No, we've seen in this region then go on the road and everybody win their first uh, first matchup. Yeah. So look at this. So then you got so you go up Shores and Five A. So they're going to win the win the region, and then you've got BC Rain, who is losing to Gulf Shores right now. They're going to end up five and three in the region. UMS is already five and three in the region, and you got to, uh, Faith Academy who's going to be five and three in the region. And those three are going to make the playoffs. And look at the tiebreakers all sorted out there. But that Biger team we saw so impressive. Of course, they had to forfeit the. The team, the win after uh, against the UMS, game we, the game we did, yeah, with an ineligible player, and so that's gonna that's gonna end up knocking them out of the playoffs and getting UMS in the playoffs for the 30th straight year. Uh, in I, a don't, row. I don't want to editorialize here too much, but didn't that almost feel like that was a marginal player, or am I wrong about yeah, that? I, I, I heard several stories bouncing around, but it sure it, it just seems like it was m maybe possibly more of a clerical thing. Uh, I don't think they got a lot out of that player in that game, but they had to forfeit that win. They beat UMS right by three touchdowns. Yeah, uh, so they'd be, uh, if that forfeit didn't happen, they'd be in a UMS out because they would yep. have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Right. So uh, then you Them's got the rules. Four, yeah, uh, so Jackson, 4A, Jackson. Uh, then you got Jacksonville, Aniston, Hanley. You got T.R. Miller, Bayside, St. Michael. Um, got all kinds of. All kinds of 4A to get sorted out. We'll we'll have Dan sort that out <laughs> later on in the uh, in okay. the uh, yeah. third third that, quarter. That'll be super smooth. <laughs> so uh, halftime here, Sarah Land rolling again, 56-14. Friday night rivals, our last Friday night party here on UTV 44. The following segment is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. One of the things that resonates us at uh, Coca-Cola United and uh, Dr. Pepper that correlates between team sports and back into our business is no doubt is teamwork. We see time and time again, not that anybody can't be successful in it, but they have a jump start of what a team environment looks like and everybody working together and pulling together for a common goal and it just puts them miles and miles ahead. But just kind of one example from that is in Mobile, we actually bottle our Cokes in Mobile. It's made in Mobile. We're the only beverage made in Mobile. But what does that mean? We have to make the drinks, all right? We have to manufacture it, put it into a warehouse. The warehouse is logistic, loads it on a truck. We deliver it to the stores, the salesman has to sell it, and we have to deal with the retail and the consumer. So if you look at that, there's five or six touch points for every little Coke bottle before it makes it to the Coke shelf. Without that teamwork of pulling together and each department working together to get that final product to the shelf, it just does not happen. Our Bree Hughes from Sarah Land High School, our 
Andy Citrin, injury attorney. How, how big is the scholarship? Scholar athlete. How big? Five thousand dollars. Five large. If you win I mean, it all, you had yeah. GPA four point three plays volleyball, and of course we know they had a very good volleyball team. Yep. Runners up. Last, runners up this week. Runners up to uh, runners up uh, earlier this week. Right. Uh, advanced honors endorsement. Uh, NHS Leo Club. MCAA All County Honors, a lot of stuff right there. Committed to Northwest Florida State College to play softball. Plans to major in sports broadcasting. Uh oh. Yeah, we just, okay. you know, Bree, come on, you just, just <laughs> let us have, just let us have this gig. Just don't, don't come take it away from us. He saw a picture of me at halftime and say, how long is he going to hang around? <laughs> so that's or, one of our scholars. How long has he been doing? <laughs> <laughs> Time's running out on the guy on the right. <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, also Henry Green, he's the kicker from McGill yeah. Tulane. Talked to his dad before the game. 12th grader, GPA 3.97. And uh, the honors include Green Club, NHS, Student Ambassador, Honor Roll, Academic Letter, Life Team. He's the starting kicker, obviously, playing through 10 UA, Auburn, or South Alabama football offer from Rhodes College. Which you referred to as? You tell me. I think it was, the, it was either the Yale or the Harvard of the... Of the South. Yeah. 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 One of those... Great school yeah, in Memphis. One of those two. So it was a busy, busy first half. It's, uh, uh, you know, we had 70 points. Uh, and so McGill wins the toss. They don't defer. They take it. And then Ladarian Miller takes it 48 yards. Sarahland comes into this game giving up 48 a game. Miller takes it 48. And it's 7-0 Jackets. Yep. It, 48 yards again yeah right. and and Sarah Land got it back they able to get it to tie the score McWilliams. yep McWilliams with a touchdown then a picks six here as it was tipped by Thompson and then Cam Lafitte his second pick six of the night and then second touchdown of the night for Sante McWilliams and now at this point it is rolling for Sarah Land then they block a punt Cam Le Lafitte, Lafitte yep. blocks it Arteris Moffitt turns it in. Eighth block punt of the season for Sarah Land. No, he said he does not believe in littering. Yep. He went to pick it up like it was a like he's candy a ball wrapper. boy. And like he's a ball boy. Yeah, to pick exactly. it up. Dees with his second touchdown of the night there. And they're not done yet. But Murchison, it was nice to see this young man get a big connection as he goes to Rev Zuniga. Yep. 62 yards on that score there. But Lacey says, I'll go one more. D's mm. into the end zone, his third touchdown of the night. Well, he had 256 yards passing in the first half for K.J. Lacey, 377 yards total in the first half, 18 first downs to seven. At one point, Sarah Land had scored 49 straight. They even punted mm. once. They even punted in once the in the first half. In the middle of all that? Yeah. Wow. And now we will start the second half in Sarah Land. We'll get it back as Gage Weaver had come in at quarterback for that last series with just under a minute to go, and I would I would guess KJ Lacey's done for the done for the night. I would think so. A lot of youth here in the second half, and and in, Ryan Williams, the best player in the state of Alabama, has not even seen the field tonight. I don't think. No, he's uh, could have gone, uh, uh, but they, they're, they're so deep, got so many weapons, and just. Uh, He'll be he'll be ready to go next week. They're also playing without C.D. Gill, one of their other yeah. really talented receivers. Yeah. He's uh, dealing with an injury. They're hoping to have him back for the first round. You see Gage Weaver there in the middle. Wasn't there a Weaver who's a quarterback yeah. at Citronel um, a long time ago, or was uh -huh. he at Saraland? Was uh -huh. there one at Saraland? Hang on. I think uh, the, the the quarterback that got him to the state finals one year was a Weaver. Okay. He went ended up uh, going to Louisiana Lafayette. Or Lafayette. Okay. Yeah. I think that was Weaver. Big, strong kid. Yep. Okay. All right. So Weaver will s start here and give it off to Jones. That's Lawardrick Jones. And probably guess we're going to see continuous clock here in the second half. If I just had to, just had to guess. Um, you kind of saw Sarah Land, you know, really trying to kind of take the air out of things late in the first half, using up the play clock. And yeah, you can really take the air out if you do that to continuous clock. But yep, the game's not competitive. You don't want to see anybody get hurt, obviously. Yep. Then, and, and also, you know, we we made this reference a lot over the years. But the players who are out here that are backups, say for 
So this is their time to shine. This yeah. is their reward for is Jones. This is their reward for all the work they do in practice. I agree. And, you know, able to get in there and uh, go. And, yeah, the clock continues to run, even though it's a first down. So the clock is running. So that's it's probably a good sign. For sure. Okay, sure, maybe trying to get to New Orleans. Something like that. Like you. Uh, much thanks to Jason Welch. Oh. And the production team. Ed Smith. Uh, Ed, and uh, for helping put that uh, together with. Thanks to Coach Griffin. Myself for Myself and Coach Griffin, yeah. Coming in to, uh, what, a, what an honor. And a special night here for McGill. Big hit again coming in. That's sophomore Lamarian Miller. That ball came loose. I think that popped, popped loose and Camden Owen fell on it there for the Spartans. So we have a second and eight if you're just joining us here. The, the field house with a beautiful plaque on there we saw named in honor of Zach Miller, Dan's son. Jones will pick it ahead for for a couple there's yeah it was a little more than I bargained for there's the you know, came in tonight to be honest with you so walked over and saw it for the first time and uh it's so been gone to two and a half years yeah not not just a I mean, not just a seal I don't mean just a seal but also was a seal and then also seal team six yeah, yeah. leader of seal team six right yeah. That's, yep. uh it's like Seal Hall of Fame. If I'm, it's kind of how that yeah. <laughs> would be for Zach. So up he's, to the 26. Yeah. I'm sure I end up in the McGill Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of when things started turning around, kind of starting to get some momentum because McGill went through some lean years here in, in football. His senior year, Chris N Nemeth was right. the coach. He, he came back. He came back, for to, the, yeah, yeah, he came back to, from uh, over in Florida where he lives to be here tonight. And I got a chance to see him real quick. But... Uh, yeah, he, he was a fire and brimstone guy, and the kids really played hard for him, and uh, they got to the playoffs, won at one of those road games where you're four, got to go play the one, yep. and upset uh, Northview Dothan. Oh, wow. Came back and lost to a great Alma Bryant team oh, by, a, by a field goal at the end. Oh, that was the, Alma, the lightning in a bottle Alma Bryant mm -hmm. uh, team would have. Uh, was Brandon Johnson, was he on that yep. team? Uh, who's the big uh, the big defensive end? Who Johnson, uh, yes, the one that's who Zach was blocking. Right. So that wasn't fun. But, but uh, they held their own and, and lost by a field goal at the end. Brandon might have been gone. Johnson okay. might, might have been gone by that point. Okay. That's Jones in the backfield with Weaver here, Sarah Land. Moving it down, marching against McGill here down to the about the 19. Going to bring up third down as we're a continuous clock. We're in the Dr. Pepper maroon zone. Nice tackle and there, by the way, going low. Yeah, you know, we, we say this every, but how, how fast does an 11 game regular season just fly by? It's amazing. Right on Friday night. I mean, it just starts and it's it's over. Yep. Playoffs start next week. And you can, you can catch me if you want to uh, on my sofa. <laughs> streak, so. <laughs> streak like uh, we're not invited. Like uh, Cal Ripken Jr. that goes <laughs> on and on in playoffs, not being able to broad, be broadcast live in the state of Alabama because it's 1979, <laughs> or some people think that's the right. way it is. Yeah, they, you know, and, and I always want to say, like, look at the games we do on Friday nights. Look at the crowds that we have at the games, and they're live on TV. Exactly. Don't be staying home to watch Jim and Dan, folks. <laughs> no. I mean. Uh, it just doesn't hurt the gate. It helps grow the sport. Show off young men. Show off young women who are part of sports. Show off scholastic yep. athletes. Right. But we can't do them live, and so we can't do them. It's tough. You can't tell the whole story, right? Yep. Third and three, and Weaver has to hurry and gets it off with one. Well, I think some thought they played never got off, but that, that was... That was a strange play from the start there. I think it really was. I'm not sure Jones thought the play got off. And then suddenly he had two yellow jackets who uh, London Hill was there saying, oh, no. This is a play. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're playing here. And so it's going to bring up fourth down. 
and Sarahland will just just go for it. I'm sorry, it'll be second down. That was a that was a first down play. I was too busy. I couldn't see the down and distance marker because I was on my soapbox talking about the <laughs> lack <laughs> of play, lack of playoffs and. Uh, Gage Weaver throws this one quickly, uh, quickly out in the flat, able to get the touchdown off to Taryn Senegal. Well, AMS Calvert touchdown. Your guys hiding on the bench that look pretty good too. Yeah, Senegal a junior, and he's able to get the touchdown. AMS Calvert Innovations and in Steel strengthened by people now hiring at AMS Calvert Jobs. dot com. Bree Hughes keeps doing great in broadcasting. You and I will be applying at Amos Calvert Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly we have Friday well, nights off. As I said in the 90s, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Singleton. Ready to come on here, and he does just that. So we'll take a timeout. Already five and a half to go in the third. This one all Saraland here. I'm Friday Night Rival Senegal with the TV reception from Gage Weaver. Friday Night Rivals tonight brought to you in part by Greer's. They bring us the starting lineups. Of course, proud longtime sponsor of our starting lineups and serving the community for 107 years. Thank you to Greer's. So it's just at the downtown Greer's yep. last night. Uh, the U.S. Army, also part of what we do. We appreciate them so much. The kickoff is presented by the Army. Be all you can be and find your path at GoArmy.com. Also, this evening's game brought to you in part by the U.S. Coast Guard. Proud to sponsor the presentation of the colors at each Friday Night Rivals football game this season. Thank you very much. Five and a half to go. United States Color Guard, Coast Guard camera there. And, you know, the graphic is right. It's hiding. Coach Mrs. Jeff, there we go. There, there we, we go. go. Lisa Kelly. Kelly, Jeff Kelly's wife, right there in the right in the middle at mm -hmm. high school, high school sweethearts, Southern Miss sweethearts and Sarah Land's sweethearts, That's right? That's great. Got to be, uh, got to be Sarah Land's first couple, right? I mean, it's got to be. I would think so. It would yeah. have to be, yeah. So she's also uh, heads up the dance team at Sarah Land uh, High School. They got it uh, going on at Sarah Land. Whew. I mean, it is a sweet life, and it's a lot of victories, and it's a lot of academic success too. We've talked about that for a while. Kick to the far side, and that goes off the hands and out of bounds, and so no penalty mm. there. Uh, Jared Kihas, who is down on the sidelines, and. Been with us for uh, his test. Chris Weaver, that's who he was saying was the quarterback. Chris Weaver. Very good. Yep. Yeah, and I, w I would imagine these two Ken. are. You know, start off I wouldn't Ken. be shocked if they were Ken. related. <laughs> yeah, they're kin, and they could be brother. Uh, but that was a tough kid, man. Chris Ooh. Weaver. Ooh. He meant business. Remember that game we did at Ladd 106 years ago when, when Citronelle came down to play? They played Williamson? Was it a Williamson game at yeah, Ladd? Remember there was disciplinary trouble. Yeah, they brought like 17 kids down. They, and they all came down in the same old <laughs> Delta 88. It's like, well, where's your team? Well, we got a little problem. <laughs> then we did a Citronelle game. They had a Weaver kid on that yep, team, a little yep, running back. Yep. Then we did a Citronelle game a handful of years ago as well. And that program's on the rebound. They've had a nice season this year as yeah. we're inside. Five minutes to to go. Pew with the tackle there. As Miller, well, you were talking about that touchdown run he had on the first play, on uh, the first drive of the game, just how smooth Whew. he is. Now, you, again, you know, the hole was big, which yep. shocked us all, but man, he, he moved, but he moved in a, such a smooth, athletic way. Just a freshman. That is not sophomore jerky, you know, none of that. Sophomore brother linebacker knocked yep. the helmet off uh, early, and here's Miller again out across the 25 to the 27. He'll pick up 14 there for the Yellow Jackets. So the cover's not bare here at McGill for David Faulkner. No, it's not bare, and you've got to, you know, uh, you got to have some players. you got to have some kids who are enrolled who can help you win on the football field. One thing about McGill, too, I'll, I'll say this. Always had a good culture, but the culture is not just the culture. The culture is down the hallways and in the classroom. They don't even the, the problem never gets to the football field because mm -hmm. they try to snuff out any problems that they have in the classroom. But how many all years have we done this? How many 5'11", 178 pound linebackers have we seen at McGill that just play with their hairs on fire? Yep. I mean, just a just a ton of them. Plenty. 
Murchison gets it off to Stanton. Stanton's put together a nice, nice senior season here for the Yellow Jackets. He really has. He was hot in the first half, too. Mm -hmm. Up a third, three for the third down and a couple here for the Yellow Jackets. But this time tomorrow night, they'll be SEC. Ooh. Picture will look a little clearer. Oh, it's six <laughs> six forty five kick. It won't be over quite yet, but so yeah, I've got a good day planned tomorrow, man. Good day. <laughs> good day, evening, all day. Going to the beach. Yeah, I love when you're at the beach. I'm out of town, and you're gonna be at the beach. So, that's not usually how it works. Well, we got. A couple of the former Navy down. SEALs that are in town. We're going to entertain them, take them down to uh, Florida Bama properties, let them enjoy themselves a little bit. Then they got to. I mean, you're kind of going out. on a limb that uh, Navy SEALs might enjoy the Florida Bama. Yeah. Kind of, a, the, kind of a stretch there. That, that goes. To, <laughs> that goes. To, that, that's like pairing wine with the right fish. They, <laughs> they love it. Who doesn't? Right. And somebody. Uh, yeah. Could, just going to have a great, great time down there. And, yeah. I'm uh, going to start a bunch of junk, and then you know I've got a Navy <laughs> SEAL behind me. Well, what are you going to do about it? Oh. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a blast. Uh, and uh, again, uh, and just uh, just more celebration of a great man's life. Yeah, what 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 a guy! You know, I didn't know that it was. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to get to me when I came to the stadium tonight. And it sure did, though. Give up to about the forty-five. Got a lot of people in this town and in the surrounding area, Jim, that just were so good to me when we lost Zach. You know, it was tough. Tough time, uh, but uh, it's not uncommon. I mean, we all lose the people that we love. Uh, often, uh, parent just doesn't expect to lose a lose a child. And even you know, with his, there was always the tension with him doing what he did. You sure. know, uh, and, and you, I think you could recall some stories about me receiving a phone call from him in the in the box yep. here. Uh, and you're like, I have to take this. I'm like, really? You're gonna take? Like, you're gonna, I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Now I know. It's, yeah, you're not. Uh, you're not getting a call that you're, uh, you know, just from somebody checking in. This yeah. is like, uh, yeah, okay. Get. Sometimes the uh, uh, only time a call that can be uh, made. But also, you know, as a, I think a lot of us have a, a image of a Navy SEAL and just you just kind of whether it's been portrayed in movies or whatever. But then you see the, like just how. The, the, the smile that Zach mm -hmm. had, the infectious, how we yep. loved everybody here on fourth down from McGill, and Miller pushed that, and nice. he's got the, the first down. But, nice. but, it, but also there was stories told about how he would interact with the girl at, behind the counter at Subway, as well as he would someone he's known as. He was just a, that's just a very infectious personality. Yeah, he valued all the people that would come into his life if for a moment or if for ever. And so uh, I was really proud of him, just the way he... It was always that way, always that way. And uh, he would take his friends from McGill out to kind of story time when he would come home. And that group started out, Jim, probably around a handful. And then as the service went on and as uh, more people were, you know, he, he just, everybody was in. Just come on yep. out. And then it would be up to 20, 30 people that yep. just hang out for a beer to, to say hello to Zach. So that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter, Miller. Good-looking freshman here. He's got one of the touchdowns for McGill tonight. We'll head to the fourth. Saraland closing in on a perfect regular season here at McGill. Hey, got a sick roof, right, Dan? Oh, man, you got a sick roof. That's a sick feeling. Not it's like, man, your roof is sick. It looks so good. <laughs> no. if, it's, if it's the other way. No, you want to call the doctor. Call the roof doctor. Proud supporter of the uh, student athletes on Friday Night Rivals. Also brought to you in part by Fast Signs. Transforming your place begins at our place. Let's, let Fast Signs help you make your statement. And Herc Reynolds providing our eye in the sky there in the end zone. Herc Reynolds is there you go. I Proud mean, and a longtime supporter of Friday Night Rivals. Perfect all year at dodging extra points uh, as <laughs> yeah, well man. in the scaffolding. We go. So here we go, fourth quarter, last quarter of the year here on Friday Night Rivals. Murchison looking to go up top. Hangs it up there. He's got a touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. Murchison hung it up there. Blaine Barry. Aminus Calvert touchdown. Murchison from 37.
And he's got his second touchdown pass of the night. Yeah, really easy touchdown here, too. The corners beat bad. He's got to kind of wait for it. Safety coming over, not quite in time. And the PAT is good. 63 20, 84 points here tonight at Mac T. Here tonight, Sarah Land on top 63 21 over McGill Tulins. Try to show some of our great crew members here who bring you these great pictures every Friday night. They, they get here long before us, they yep. stay long after us, yep. breaking down the equipment and Really great crew, lucky to get to work with them every Friday night. Love them. By the way, that last touch up, Blaine Barre. Yeah. The uh, backup quarterback. Would have confirmed that for you, make sure you knew. There's, there's our guy, Jared Kihas, down on the sidelines. He's great at what he does, man. Been around He's, this game a long time. Yeah, got a down on the fair catch call for it. Gives some of those great sideline shots and he's been a it's been a, he's done a lot of roles on these you know high school football wouldn't be here today without jared kihas i mean he really took it over when we moved over to nbc and he did really got this thing on the on the map each and every friday night it's so much work behind the scenes to make sure that we had a good broadcast put up put up with us for all these years no kidding. how many meetings do you think he said he's is there anybody else we could find like at nbc do you think that they had those meetings was the biggest <laughs> challenge that he <laughs> So Jared Kios, he Great and guy. Jeff Kelly, both Southern Miss alum. Down inside 11 minutes to go here. I'm trying to mention these new players in there as Jones continues to pile ahead. Jones with the carry. St. Louis on the side. Pop down. New numbers in here for I think Sam Lewis still in there though with that with that tackle. So Sarah Land will take on Macadori next week to open things up. In the first round of the playoffs, they'll be they'll be at home. And boy, Weaver looks the part of the quarterback, doesn't he? I mean mm -hmm. you just look at him with the size and oh yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that were, if it's not a brother, it's a first cousin. Ha. Let me put it like that. Back off to Jones, and he'll pick up a first down up to the 47-yard line. McGill came out with a little fight tonight. It was great to see. Yeah. Sarah Land just so much speed and talent. And really, D's coming out of nowhere. Only 11 catches when he came into the game tonight. Yeah, three touchdowns tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, great Look, catch on a on a ball over the middle where he high pointed it. That wasn't even one of the touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, Lafitte had the big pick six on defense and the block punt. Jones up the right side. Watch out. Jones gonna have a first down inside the 40. He's ridden down by Welch on there. Here's our player of the game. You know, it's always the offensive guys. Now, how about this? We're going to give it to Cam Lafitte, the senior leading tackler for Sarah Land. Blocks the punt on that one. And also had the pick six. Really turned. I mean, it was 7-7 it was seven, seven there and yeah. got things turned around. And yeah. so Cam Lafitte with the block punt, the pick six. Assist by Johnson on the tip pass. Unofficially, I had him for 42 tackles tonight in the first half. <laughs> he the first was everywhere. Half. And over the middle, no flag there. And that'll be incomplete. So Dr. Pepper player of the game, Cam Lafitte. And he's had a great season. Their leading tackler coming in, four sacks, 12 tackles for losses on the year. Now two intercessions, two TDs defensively. They've got a lot of good players. Yeah. There, uh, you talked about it the first time we saw Sarah Land this year uh, against Spanish Fort, and you were like, "Whoa, we, we we know about we know about KJ Lace, we know about Ryan Williams, we know about all the offense, but that defense, I mean, mm. they were salty in that first game when yeah. we saw them against Spanish Fort, and they are, they just simply are, and I think that's woo, look at that effort right there. Jones drops the shoulder on Trey Walters, uh, Waters, the junior, still in there for 
McGill. Now, I know people are going to watch tape. They're going to know, but they might be a little surprised as to how stingy this defense is as they roll into the playoffs. They're, they're, they're thinking about this fantastic offense. Sarah Land's got another 63 here tonight. They really do nearly unplug the jukebox in the second half, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, they've given up six rushing touchdowns and six passing touchdowns all season coming into tonight. Mm -hmm. Teams, how about this? Their defense, 85% on third down. Getting off the field 85% of the time on third down. Probably a, a result of a, a poor first and second down as well. Yep. We saw it tonight. A lot of second and 13s, second and 14s. This one complete. Good tackle. At the far side, that was a good tackle. Senegal's got a touchdown tonight. He does. Wrapped up and thrown down here as we're inside seven minutes. Sarah Land not in a hurry to anything going here. Who your Bulldogs have tomorrow, Dan Brennan? They have got Missouri Tigers, who have got well, having a good season. So, uh, but it's in Athens. Georgia favored by a couple of touchdowns or so. They looked pretty good without Bowers the other day against Ooh. Florida. Yep. And give inside. See, he was popped in here for. Land. We got Kendall Batty in for the carry here. Do not need a heat timeout at the six minute mark in this one uh, here tonight, Dan Brennan. Let it roll. <laughs> Let it roll. I'll get down there and we'll have our Dr. Pepper award of the uh, Dr. Pepper belt, of course. It's been a lot of fun this year, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, they love the. That's going to be. Sarah Land's going to have three of those. Mm -hmm. Keep the building, keep the building going up in Sarahland for belt storage. <laughs> <laughs> Putting out a request for proposal. Like, we need a custom belt storage uh, built here in Sarahland. Give again, and this is Sewer, who is just shy. Let's see here, trying to keep up with the new. To Madre Sewer in with the carry and Sarah Lane and the Dr. Pepper maroon zone down the five. They scored 70 against Foley earlier this year and they're knocking on the 70 number again. Play clock inside of 10 and Gage Weaver hurries now. Gives it back off to Sewer, and Sewer dropped after a gain of a couple as London Hill playing his last game here yeah. for McGill came in and made the nice stop. Good for him. Yep, second and goal. This will get us down to about 345 when they snap this one. More changes, more players getting in for Sarah Land here, and now we're inside four minutes. High snap, Gage goes back and falls on it at the 10. As Mitchell Adams, the sophomore, was rushing in there. And I'll bring up third down and goal. You know, a guy like Gage Weaver, you know, your starting quarterback, nearly a flawless robot, you know. Yeah. Beautiful athlete though, but and, and he come he wants to he wants to do well. Now now it's his team, it's his time on the field. Yeah. He's gotta feel a little disappointed. They moved him very well and now and he's thrown a touchdown. Yeah. And his reward for running that scout team every week probably yeah. in practice, right? Absolutely. It was a big crowd when this one started, I can tell you that. Give it off to Sewer on the right side, trying to stretch it out, and he breaks a tackle at the five, spins, and he's in for the Saraland touchdown. How about that effort, huh? And look at some of the, some of the starting players over on the far side. I've just You noticed they were all jumping around. They were super happy to see him score. And a great effort by 
Sewer is just a sophomore. Amon S. Calvert, touchdown to Amon S. Calvert. Innovations in steel strengthened by people now hiring at Amon S. Calvert Jobs. Dot com and Singleton out here for his 10th PAT attempt mm. tonight. Wow. Nine for nine with a wow. fumble with a fumble recovery. He's like, no love for the kicker for the player of the game. Then he is 10 for 10. Second time this season. Sarah Land has scored 70. And the sophomore sewer breaks a tackle from Hill and stays on his feet for the Sparty score. Friday Night Rivals, our last game of the season. Here's so many people to thank. Mm. And, uh, not necessarily put in order of importance, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> want to thank. Uh, Wait a minute, I'm number two? The, the, uh, ben, uh, ben, I said, yeah, it's not, the order's yeah, not real. Yeah, okay. Vincent Early, our director. Sam Dayback, uh, just so much at the station and during the week. And Ed Smith, thank you, Ed, for all you've done. I know you're moving on, but hopefully we see you back here on Friday nights. Ethan Early, jo Mark Joseph doing our graphics, all these all these great people on our team that make these games look what they look like on Friday nights as Welch carries it out past the 40. So many more behind the scenes. Uh, Michael Crane doing audio. Victoria always up on top of this. Gives you the great tight shots that you see. Christian Clark, Jared Kihas on cameras. Jason Welch, Caden Andrews, Patrick Hamon. Gray Armstrong up in the lift tonight. Kendall Faust, our stats. Chris Megason, Michael Banks, the scorer's table. It's an odd name, but I guess you got into stats, so that worked out well for mom and dad. Daniel Hicks, our red hat. Kendall Faust fills in as well. Thomas McDonald and Jared Kihas. Victoria also gets the crew together. Diane Ferris, Melody Ogle. We got more. Well, these are all people not in the too deep. These are all number one on the depth chart. These are like <laughs> not in the too deep. Again, Sam Day, Jason, Mark Joseph, Stan Black back there, Master Control, Nathan Nickerson, Daniel Brown, Liam Oates, Andrew Presley, our engineers, Charles Rice and Chris Lott. It's like like rights and clearances. But where would we be without Sam Day doing that as well? Did, did, jail. Did, in jail. Did we need his name on there four times, <laughs> Sam Day? I mean, I know you do a lot, but we could have just combined them into one. Just that's all. Sam Day, first year. Hey, his first year here. He's been a great help to us. Yeah, continue his clock. I better head on down, Jim. As well. All right. So uh, yeah, a great crew. So uh, see all of our, our folks here who get here early, stay up late. They're on top of us here on the press box. There's Jared back on the back on the sideline. Pass complete here. About 30. Then down in the yeah, there's Gray Armstrong. He has been waving since the third quarter. We've been telling him that we're going to get him on. He's been waving at us since the third quarter. He's up in our Perk Reynolds eye in the sky. And down inside half a minute here is Beret, who had the touchdown pass in at quarterback for the Yellow Jackets on this drive. Just can't thank everybody who, thank you, watching Friday Night Lights, Friday Night Rivals, called what you, what you wish, but we love doing high school football here on UTV 44 and takes a whole bunch of talented people to make this work on Friday night's beret looking to go up top wants a touchdown to end it and McGill does at the horn get the touchdown Reed Watkins a sophomore with a touchdown reception to close things out here beret with the 23 yard toss Gonna end up possibly could have 98 points here on the board tonight, and I think they might just say that's that's it. Yeah, they're not even gonna kick the extra point. They're gonna say that's that's it. That's gonna do it. What a night here for Saraland. 10 and 0. Congratulations to the Spartans. Their second perfect season in school history. And 
They're the defending state champs. They score 70 for the second time this season. 10-0 for Jeff Kelly and the Spartans. Sarah Land closes out their regular season. Perfect 70 and 70-27. The final score here tonight. They get the big win. They keep rolling. Defending 6A state champs will open up the playoffs at home next week against McAdory. And McGill will finish their year at 5-5. Five and five. And our first-year head coach, David Faulkner, so glad he's back down here in our area coaching high school football after a great run at Fairhope and Enterprise. And now uh, back here at McGill, too. And down on the field to Dan Brennan. Now down on the field with me and down on the field with uh, Coach Jeff Kelly. Congratulations. Another great victory. The offense looked great. You had some players that actually never even saw the field tonight, but that didn't seem to slow down the Spartans. You know, we got off to a slow start. You know, I, I, you know, you tip your hat, you know, Coach Faulkner and those guys, I got a ton of respect for them. They came out had a great plan and marched right down the field and scored. And we kind of sputtered a little bit early, but, uh, you know, we poured it on, you know, defensively. Um, you know, we kind of found our groove, you know, and did some real good things. And offensively, you know, we got hot. Um, you know, we, we were able, able to have balance. K.J. did an outstanding job, you know, in, in uh, what we asked him to do. And, you know, he pushed the ball down the field. We were able to run it. And we had Jordan Dees, you know, senior, you know, one of a great, one of a great team guys. What a game. game! Had a great game. I don't know what his stats was, but it was a huge game. And uh, you know, he he made play after play tonight. And uh, we really need need some guys to step up and do that. And uh, you know, he had a tremendous game, tremendous effort. So proud of him. Quick question, maybe a dumb question. Playoffs are here. Are you ready for the playoffs? Ready or not, you know, here they come. You know, it's just we're proud. We we told the kids we're not going. We're not ten and zero. But we've been one and zero ten times, and I think that's the way we live around here. It's it's not a ten and zero thing, and so the playoff is it's uh it's just kind of another week. You know we understand what's at stake. Our guys have been through it, and uh you know we got to find a way to go win a game every Friday night. Okay, now you find out too. You know this is at stake too because it's time to bring in my friend from Dr Pepper and Coca Cola, and here's the presentation. Congratulations, Coach, on behalf of Coca Cola and Dr Pepper. Game of the week. Three, three, three touchdowns tonight for Jordan Dees. What a way to close out his senior campaign during the regular season here. He's hoping he's got uh, five more chances to win a belt uh, to wrap things up. So final score here tonight, 70 to 27. Big win for Sarah Land. Congratulations. And McGill finishes up five and five. Thanks to Dr. Pepper. Uh, they've been such a great partner with us all year long. United States Coast Guard, Sheriff's Office in Mobile County, Greer's Andy Citroen giving away that $5,000 academic Scholarship, Roof Doctors, IBEW, Local 505, AMS Calvert, Fast Times, the United States Army, and Herc Reynolds for our Eye in the Sky. So for our last time here on Friday night, thanks to Vince Early, our great, great team, Ed Smith, Sam Day, all of our great folks, Jared Kihas, Victoria Crowder right above you, our great crew. I can't name them all. I, I tried to get through them all. Thank you so much. I'm Jim Cox. What a great year. We'll be back in the fall of 2024 because they don't let us do the playoffs live in the state of Alabama.